trying to save my voice, everybody. <clears throat> a lot of talking to do in the next couple hours, so. All right. Everybody hearing me for a sound check? All right. All right, good. So sound is being heard. All right. Good job. There we go. All right, fantastic. We will get sh going shortly here. Tried to start a little earlier uh, yesterday, and everybody kind of got a little upset about that. So we're just not going to do that today. We're just going to wait. All right. We tried to start early yesterday because we had an announcement. But uh, today we don't have an announcement. We've already had that. We will have FOMC this afternoon, so everybody be aware of that. So be very careful. All right. Yeah, I'll do that, Pip. Uh, okay. Uh, I won't have. I won't be projecting that. So. Um. Yeah, at the top of your screen, there's a little button that says Notes. Make sure you click that. Top of screen. Ah, I have T's. Huh. I'm a very good type of uh, drawer with this pen. <laughs> uh, and the way this works, folks, is I'm going to do, I'm going to go through a PowerPoint, so we do the disclaimer, we understand what we're looking for in here. We're not in a hurry to make trades in the New York session because it doesn't go until later. All right. So uh, here we go. <laughs> Especially today with FOMC, it's probably going to be a quiet day. All right. Yeah, exactly. We will go through the trades, Gloria. If, if there are any trades, we will go through them. All right. That's what we do in here. All right, we go through the trades. We go through what the, where the opportunities are. We don't know if they're going to be trades. There are trade opportunities. All right, we'll go through the trade setup we're looking for. We could have a trade setup and not a trade. All right, so uh, we could have a trade and not a trade setup, in which case we would pass. All right, so no, we just have a don't you channel for that at all. Okay, Michael, that's nice. 160 on the pound, Avi, 65 on the pound. Better than the last six months after four years. Uh, <laughs> that's good to hear, Michael. Very cool. All right. We all see in the blue board. All right. Good. All right. Uh, Oh, way to go, Pip. Good work. That's the way you do it, Pip. Yeah, if you're going to in trade silver, don't trade gold. Uh, well, you're here, Mohammed. So you're in good shape, Mahmoud. You're here. You're here. So you're in great shape. We haven't gone through them yet, Robbie. We're going to go through them so everybody understands. We're not here to do. Well, this is not a trade signal room. All right? People get that wrong. They think somebody's going to post a signal and you just take it. That's not what we do here. We identify the opportunity, and then we, we learn how to understand why it's the opportunity. Why is it the opportunity? All right? 
And then that's why you will make more pips. If you learn the why instead of the how, then you'll understand. All right? So we're not concerned with my web. My, my pip count counts nothing, James. What counts is, you, is our traders. All right? So, so anybody, anybody, anybody who lives across the pond should trade silver. All right? Not today, any day. They should just be part of your trading currencies, all right? Because it moves very, very well, pays very, very well. Right? It's, it's, a, it's a good currency, and it's technically traded. So, so there we go. There you go. We're stuck with one-to-one -one leverage on silver, so we can't trade it. We can trade it, but we, there's no reason to trade it because we have no leverage in the United States. All right, let's get this show underway, folks. All right, so here we go. Let me get recording done. All right, so should be recording now. Good shape. So this is the New York session live room. All right. Nobody's told you that you can make $3 million in two weeks in here. Trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Therefore, deciding to trade foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objectives, your level of experience, and your risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment. Therefore, never invest any money you cannot afford to lose. Be aware of all the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek the advice of an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. All right. All right. Forex target trading is the educational part of our business model. It is the methodology that we use. All right. Correct traders is the technology part of our business. They are the charting system that we use to do the methodology. We use the award-winning methodology created by me, and then we uh, uh, do the award-winning ProAct charting software. Right? Our results are taken from actual traders using the combination above, and then average for our pip capture. Understand this. In other words, it is our trader's record, not my record. It does not matter what my record is. What matters is your record. All right? So remember, we are training setups, not trades. Any decision to take a trade is yours. We are training what an RF1010 or a Six Aces trade setup looks like in a live trading environment, not after the fact. So I may say this is a valid RF1010 setup, enter when ready. That's a trade setup, but that's not yet a trade. You still have to look for T30s, previous support or resistance, any fibs, T30s comes from the pivot point, assess the risk and reward, Know the target. Know the stop loss. If you don't know the target and you don't know the stop loss, you are not a trader. You are a gambler. Wait for a hook or a center. And if everything is right, then you're going to make the decision to take the trade. Right? And uh, so stops are going to be the technical stop. So we may say the stops around 110, 12. You must use the technical stop, which is the last support or resistance plus five to seven pips on a number that ends in a three or a seven. So in this illustration, it would be 110.13 or 110.17 are the only stops you could have. Make sure you understand that because what ends up happening later in the, and we'll get into some possible trades and everybody says, what's the stop? That's the stop. All right, everybody got it? That's the stop. All right, so if you're at, if you want me to tell you what it is, then then you're not a trader. You want somebody to hold your hand. Learn to do it correctly. All right, stops should stop should be moved to break even after 17 to 21 pips, depending on the real estate of the day. What does that mean? That means that it's not automatic. We don't know if we'll have 17 pips to move it. We don't know if we have 21 pips. We have to look and see what it is at the time. All right. Anything for, spoken of in the room is an opinion. It's not a trade call. Everybody is entitled to uh, a, uh, an opinion, including me. But my opinion is not a trade call. Make that a note of that. This is not a trading room. It's a training room. 
But we do make documented pips here, and you're going to see that this morning as usual. But we are here to teach you to fish, not give you a fish. Understand that. We're training how to use our methodology combined with the charting software to its full advantage as a service to our live room subscribers. So I want to welcome all of you here today. Those of you who are here in a 10-day pass, we're glad you're here. Everybody, uh, you know, calm down. The, uh, your questions will most likely be asked, uh, answered as we go along. Uh, what happens is there's a, a thousand traders in this room right now, and if 50 of you hit the a question button at one time, it scrolls off the chat. We don't even see it. It's that fast. All right. So we are Forex target traders. Now, what does that mean? That means many trading opportunities we identify are not entered during the New York session, but may fulfill in subsequent sessions. Okay. You'll see that today. We, and we found a lot of trade setups yesterday, opportunities. They didn't happen yesterday in the New York session, but they did happen in subsequent sessions. So that does not change the trading opportunity. All right. We will also do a heads up after the session that is recorded. All right. You will all get that link to the recording. All right. And so I uh, don't even have to go through that. Uh, we also do send alerts out to traders. You'll see some of these this morning our, as our, uh, our live room subscribers get these. Uh, during the day as we see things that happen. They are not trade signals. Do not mistake this as a trade signal. It's an area that we are where target traders. So we only trade in wide open spaces. This is the area where we'll look for a trade. All right. Any alerts either talked about or verbally are sent to live room subscribers are for educational purposes only. Please use your real name if you have that option when you arrive. We like to call people by their name. We don't like, uh, hey, big fat FX, uh, you know, uh, here's the answer to your question. That doesn't work for us. Joe Blow doesn't work for us. All right? No swearing. You'll get banned from the room if you swear. All right? Do not click request to speak. Type your question in. There are, uh, right now there's a thousand traders in here. We talk, typically have about 200 to 400. All right? No sound. Uh, don't have to do that. Sorry. Now, it's not about trading every day. It's about trading that one right day. You make money by waiting not by trading. Sounds so silly. Nobody wants to believe it, but it's true. One of the things that you will work in here, learn in here, is the wait trade. We wait for our trade to come to you. Now, everybody pay attention. This is the RF trade setup. Pay attention. This is how we look for a trade setup. All right? So, all right. We're looking on our charts. We're looking for the opportunity. We've decided to buy the euro. All right, the 60-minute is not part of this. So these are called gatekeepers down here. They're not part of this. Oh, I see what's happening. Let me see if I can change the screen size here. Oh, okay. I see. All right. So what do I need? First thing I need is this uh, to um, uh, to set up. I need a black check. What's that? That's that black candle right there. Nothing magical about it. It's just a black candle in the middle where it hits the moving average, okay? But we ask that candle to tell us what direction the money's coming in. We're looking for a buy on the euro. It puts a green diamond on the bottom that says the money's coming in in a buy. So we're interested, all right? Next thing we're going to need is we're going to need the moving average to be green because we're looking for a buy. Next thing we need is candles above this moving average because we're looking for a buy. Next thing we need is the momentum indicator to turn from red or black to green because we're looking for a buy. As you can see, that did not happen there. So we have to wait, wait. We wait for the momentum indicator to turn bright green. Now we see we've got everything we need. Now we can go up to this uh, chart up here. What do we need up here? We need a bright neon painted, arrow and painted candle telling us the money's coming in at a buy. But this trade setup, the RF1010, is a trade setup out of the desert. What is the desert? It is the highest moving average and the lowest moving average. If we are inside the desert, we do not have this, tra this trade setup. And most retail traders lose their money in the desert. All right? So what do we do? We wait for it to come out of the desert. It does so in this long candle right here. We wait for it to come out of the desert. We'll, and when it pops out, we will take the very next candle on one condition that the gatekeeper is still in harmony. All right. Now, a little bit more on the trigger. Before we enter, we let it center. All right. It's a little rhyme that we uh, we came up with to help us to remember every time. All right. So 
Every time we do that, um, uh, we wait for it to center. What does that mean? That means when the candle takes off and goes up, all right, if the candle goes up and, and goes up 20 pips, we do nothing. We wait for it to center. What does that mean? Come down halfway on itself. Comes down halfway, we will take the trade from that point as long as we have room to the targets. Very, very important. All right? We do not make a trade unless we know where the exit is. All right? So if we get an additional trigger here, can we take this one? Yes, we can. Why? We have room to the target. All right? Then there's another one up here. Can we take this one? And the answer to that question is no, we can't. Why? Because we are too close to the target. All right? Now, if you're new, you'd say, yeah, but man, you could get five or eight pips up there. Wow, why don't you just go take it? And that's exactly what the average trader trades for, five to eight pips. All right? Because of that, they have to be right 90% of the time for the rest of their life. It is not possible for you to be 90% correct for the rest of your life unless you are the greatest trader on the planet. So if you're the greatest trader on the planet, fine. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're not, you have got to stop it. All right? The big boys can't make this trade because they're too close to the target, so they move away from it. You get stopped out because you tried to grab five day pips, and you say, the Dagon broker stopped me out again. Okay? So, no, there are, less, there are no pips in the desert, John. All right? All right. So, uh, if you all hold your questions, we'll get to the charts. All right? All right. So, I'm just trying to explain what we're looking for here so you're ready to go. All right? All right, so the broker didn't stop you out. You took a trade you should never have taken. Let me show you a sell. sell. Remember, this is not part of the trade setup. I'm looking for a sell. There is the uh, blackjack to the downside. That's good. I got a uh, moving average to the downside. That's great. I got candles below the moving average. That's great. I got a momentum indicator telling me the momentum is here. All right, we're not trading, Hans. We're going through what we're looking for, what, how we're going to trade if we get a trade. Okay. So everybody hold those questions. I can't answer those questions and get through this PowerPoint, all right? Just chill, okay? Everybody chill. We'll get to the charts. There's no hurry in the Forex. Uh, all right. Now, all right, so I have what I need here. Check. I'm going up here, and I'm looking. And not only do I have an arrow and a painted candle, I also have a white dot. That white dot tells me that the big boys are here, and we're going to go 55 pips, all right? So what do I have? I have a trade set up. The question is, do I have a trade? And the answer to that is no, I don't. Why? Because I'm just pips away from the 93.00 number. All right? We never trade into a 00 number or a 50 number in the New York session. And the reason for that is that there are option contracts sitting on those numbers. All right? Option contracts run the New York system. All right? Uh, that's, that's just all there is. All right? So, we, there's the uh, uh, option contracts from Elvis, okay? So you can see them right there. If you'll notice, the vast majority of those numbers are 0, 0, and 5, 0 numbers, right? So that's why we don't trade into one. And the other thing is, we're still here in the desert. Oh, my gosh. So what happens is, retail traders think that a trade setup is a trade. A trade setup is not a trade. It is a trade setup. If it was a trade, they'd call it a trade. It is a trade setup. That's what it is. All right? So, uh, now, if you're new to our room, I'm going to quickly go through 19 currencies. All right? And then we'll come back on those that show promise, and we will delve into those deeper. Okay? So, please hold your questions till then. We will get them answered. All right? Today, there are no fundies, but we do have FOMC at this afternoon. Now, what does that mean? That means that uh, the market may be very sluggish waiting for an FOMC statement today. All right? All right, today is also the last day of the month, which can impact trading as they square up their books. So let's all remember that this could be a square up day. All right? If you don't understand that, hang around. You'll learn it all. All right? So let's go in the charts now, and let's see if we can't find an opportunity. All right? Uh, come on. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go over here on the euro dollar, and as we thought yesterday, we would have a breakout, and we have broken out, and uh, we are now possibly ready to take this trade. Okay, we have to take this support out here, as you can see. All right, all right. So those of you who are here, if you want to know what currency I'm on, I, all you have to do is look up here in the left, right up here, and it'll show you what currency. As I go through them, I'm going to tell you which one it is. Okay, 
And Leon, hold your questions. All right. All right. We're looking for this opportunity down to into this area right here. We're, we got a 1.3200 right here, even number. We're at 3227. So we've got 27 pips to move our stop. The overall target is right here. It's the S3 from the uh, HSI target and this PSR, which is a previous resistance, now support over here. That's our opportunity down all the way to here if we can get it this morning. Then there's another opportunity below it. So we'll come back to the euro. The euro is on the table for us this morning. All right. Let's look at the pound. All right. The pound was a session recap for yesterday, and we talked about if we can break this, uh, this level right here, we're going down to uh, 51.35. All right. There was also a, uh, a uh, alert from yesterday. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, three, there we go. All right. So everybody can see the alert was to sell at 52.20. This is the alert that we sell to our traders. All right. So no sound. Uh, all right. Uh, sell at 52.20 right up here. And uh, uh, after a limit at 502.6. Okay. So 5026 was right here. Where did they go? Exactly to 5026. All right, how many traders made that trade? We talked about it at length yesterday in a session recap. 78, Mike, nice job. Anybody else? We're going to figure out 86. Thanks. Okay, so 45, no B, nice job. I need your, I need your pip count. 50, 80, and 75, three numbers. Way to go. 40. Uh, need your numbers, man, 98, 66, 79, 67, 109 on two positions, 145 on two lots, 65, 65, 70, 155, still in with 90, nice job, Malcolm, 110, Michael, nice, 95, 81, 75, 60, 68, 70. wow, okay, all right, fantastic, all right, uh, Jai's still in the alert, nice job, uh, still in the trade, 145, okay, so it looks like we could count 70 pips. Would everybody agree that uh, the average record for everybody was 70, uh, 70 pips? 70 pips sound good? It's your record, not mine. Remember that. All right, Rob, 215. Wow, you must have got it way up there. Nice job. All right. All right, 70 pips for the British pound. Good job, everybody. Way to go. So what are we looking for now? We're looking for the continuation of this. We're looking for it to break this bottom and go through here. And our target now is this support area at 5025 all the way down to 4080. So that will be an opportunity for us this morning if it will break. Right. It is also the blog post this morning. So I'm putting that down there. All right, going over to the dollar CAD. All right, dollar CAD. We, yesterday we anticipated that this would be a breakout to the north. We, we, we said wait for the pullback, wait for the pullback, and take it, and our target is here. So we should still be in this trade right now. How many are still in this trade right now to the upside? It was also an alert yesterday. All right. So there's the alert from yesterday. All right. Buy at 103.10, which is right here, after the pullback. See that? After the pullback. There's the pullback. Wait on the up thrust, 3.310. So everybody who's in it right now is up only 12 pips. And our target, our first target is 103.44 right here. We're not there yet. And our upper target is 103.70 right up in here. All right. So that's what ends up happening right here. So we're in this trade. We're looking for this target this morning to finish and maybe up to here. So those of you who are not in the trade, we will watch for it. We're going to come back and see if we can't get it. So the Swissy is definitely on the table this morning for us as a continuation. Remember, we identified that trade yesterday. All right. So, uh, all right. I'm writing them down so we know what to come back to. All right. Good. Good. All right. Next. That's the cat. Swissy. Same thing we talked about yesterday waiting for the falling wedge to materialize. If they can't break down in this area, we will get a breakout to the north. Right now, this is a counter trend trade. We are not interested at all yet. I will come back and redo this chart. So let me do it right now. I'm going to take everything off of here so that we can all well know to come back and we'll go do this chart later. All right. Dollar yen. Uh, as we anticipated yesterday, we would have a breakout of the bear flag. It went down to this target. We were looking for it to break in this area. It never did, so it didn't become a trade at all. And then we had uh, ADP this morning, which drove it straight back up. The dollar Swissy, all these dollars are going to follow the dollar index. All right. This is the dollar index right over here. 
What are they currently doing with the dollar index? They are buying the dollar index. All right, they're buying dollars this morning. Buying dollar means that the pound will go down, the New Zealand will go down, the Aussie will go down, and the euro will go down. So that's great. It'll mean the dollar Swissy will go up and the dollar CAD will go up. Those are also great for us, with the exception of the Swissy. All right. So, all right. Next, uh, so we're not going to do on that uh, on the Swissy at this point until we come back, and the dollar yen. We're going to have to wait and see what she does. I'm not ready to make a decision on that. Aussie dollar. This was the trade setter from yesterday. Okay, we talked about breaking this right here. If you break the 9050, we're coming down to the S8, which is 9879, and possibly all the way down to 8956. All right, all right. How many got that trade? That was a session recap from yesterday. It was also a uh, alert from last night. All right, so there's the alert. You can see the alert said sell at 9036 right in here. 9036. The limit was 89.79, and as you can see, uh, right there she went. The first target was 9011. All right. So how many made that trade? All right, nice job. 60, 42, 68, 45, 52, 82, 20, 40. All right, 70, 89, still in 75, 76, 55, 50 to 75, 56, okay, okay, 64, nice job, nice job, everybody doing well, 48, 67, 35, all right, so looks like, uh, how about 64 pips, all right, we'll take John's number, John J, 64, does that sound reasonable for you guys? All right, 64 pips. Remember, the record is not my record. It's your record. Who gives a crap what my record is? What is your record? That's what makes on. Pick mine. 67, Al. <laughs> All right. So what are we looking for now? Let's take this up to a bigger chart and take a look at it here. Now, remember, there's no hurry in the Forex. All right. Let's take it to a day chart so we can see where we're at. All right. Let me scrunch this all down here and scrunch this in a little bit. And, wow, we're in pretty much uncharted territory, but we have a bottom all the way down here, as you can see. Current price is here, so that 87.78 is still on the table. All right? So we could certainly make that trade down to 87.78. We will be interested in that all right, if we get a solid breakout here. Now, this trend is not a really good looking trend at this point in time. So it's just a channel they've been working. All right? So we got to take the 618 out. Everybody can see that the 618 has to be taken out because we got wicks. Wicks, wicks, and a wick. What happens every time they got a wick, they run it up, run it up. Here's a wick. That means it could run it up. So we're going to be very careful this trade here. But if we get the breakdown in here, we will take that trade. All right. So everybody be aware of that. We're going to move this down if it breaks. All right. It's got to take that out. It's very close to happening, as you can see. All right. All right. They buy dollars. Continue to buy dollars. It's going to. It's probably going to make that move. Euro pound, nothing to do here until we break to the upside. And uh, as you can see here, they're trying to break, but they're not being successful. Once they do break, we will come back over here. That is the opportunity today. All right? And if you'll notice that PIP is posting the uh, ATR for the currency. That's the average trading range of the currency. So you can see the Euro Yen has an average trading range of 109 pips. Therefore, this currency could go 109 pips. All right, that's what it could do today. All right, so all right. no, there weren't any, Joe. We have very few. All right, all right. GJ, this was a, a an opportunity that was sort of there. Some of you may have made that trade. Anybody make the GJ? It was kind of an iffy trade yesterday because we were cl close to the bottom. Anybody take the GJ to the downside? All right, I need pip count. I don't. Yep, means nothing, Herman. I need pip count. John Robert, twenty-five. Anybody else? Adriano, okay. 26, 50 to 60, Herman, nice, okay. Plus, okay. Anybody else? All right. Yeah, let's call it 22 pips. Let's take the low number on GJ, 22 pips. All right. Uh, all right, so we're looking for a continuation down to 147, uh, 895 on a turn here. So if we get a turn, we will be interested in the GJ to the downside. All right. All right. Now, the EJ doesn't make a lot of sense because the, the dominant currency is the euro, and the euro is trying to go down, and it is trying to move up. So we want to be very leery of that EJ. All right. Over in New Zealand, 
as we anticipated, this would go sideways yesterday, and the trade was to break the 79.66. Uh, actually, the trade was not that. The trade was to come back up to 8,000. Does everybody remember this from yesterday? We will get a break here and wait for the 8,000 up here, right in this area right here, and sell it from there down to here. Anybody in the New Zealand? All right. Nice job, Alexi. Nice work. All right, Musa 53. Okay, anybody else? Musa missed by three pips the entry. I, I, I hate that, don't you? <laughs> All right, 38, all right, 48, nice job, 11, 85 for Polka, nice job, uh, plus 11, Fred, uh, all right, still going, yep, still short, nice work, all right, all right, so let's just count that as though we're still in that trade, and we'll wait and see if it pass, if it goes, all right, we'll, we'll wait, it. all right, so we'll just, we'll wait and see if it goes all the way, and then we'll, and then we'll count it up later, all right, Ozzy again. All right, Yen was a breakout yesterday. As we said, there's not a lot of space here. So uh, right now, we're, we're sitting here right now, up 50 and holding, okay. All right. So we're right here. We've just taken this target out. This was our, our target area yesterday. We're now looking for this target area here. We've got to break the 8,800, and if we break the 8,800, we're going down 87.57. That's not enough pips to mess with. So we'll pass on the AJ. It's not worth trying to trade for 27 pips. All right, Euro pound, we're still in this trade. Remember I told you on Monday, if you take this trade, you'll probably still be in it on Friday. We're still in this trade looking for 87.64. Uh, how many people are in the EJ and how many pips? All right. Anybody? I know a bunch of you are in it, so come on. 90 still in, nice John, up 35 Tim, 53 Mike, 96 Herman, 74 Jim, nice job, still in, nice way to go, 96, 53, 107, nice job Phil, Adriana, uh, 85, 38, 65, nice work everybody, all right, so 130 for the total so far, nice Ralph, anybody else? All right. That's why we're target traders, we don't have to click them out for five to eight pips if we know where they're going, all right. All right, re-enter today, plus 35. Nice job, Alexi. All right, so, yeah, we got a lot of them. What about Mike's 53? Would that sound good? 80, Mike's 53, does that sound pretty good for everybody? All right, at least 70. I like to be low. We don't need the pips, believe me. So we'll take 53, the low one. All right, all right, good. All right, we're looking for this to continue on up to 87.64 this morning. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's already broken and hooked. We're in the go part right now. So let's just see how where we're at. We're trying to make this trade up to 89. So not, we haven't quite gone there yet. And notice, folks, this could be a head and shoulders. So be careful here. All right, if it's a head and shoulders, we could get a break to the downside. So if you're in the trade, move your stop. All right. If you're in the trade, move your stop. We will trade this if it break if it negates the head and shoulders. It has to invalidate that. We would probably be at 87. Well, we'll have to be above 87.50 now. In order in order to take a new trade, we've got to be above 87.50. Uh, actually, we can't even make the trade because it's only 64. That's only 14 pips. So we can't make the EJ this morning. Those of you who are still in it, keep hanging hanging on to it because we're trying to go up to the top. All right. All right. Uh, Euro Aussie, another trade from yesterday. All right. It's also an alert. Uh, let's see if I can find that alert. You're Aussie, all right? It was a buy at 46.66. Uh, take part. The first target was 4,700. All right, so 47.66 was right here. The first target was 4,700. We're now approaching the 47, uh, 47.60, uh, 47.80, which is our overall target. There's nothing to be done here today on this one. How many made the trade? All right, those of you made the trade at 60, well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 420 pips right now. 316, Michael, nice job. 45, 35, 100, Nick, 75, 110. All right, 75, 250, still in. 20, 30, 60, 200, 48, nice job. 33, 25, about 80, my friend, nice job. 133, Tom, woohoo. Ron, 143, way to hang on, Ron. Nabi, 93, Ali, 500 pips. Uh, must be multiple lots, right? Or you took them all from all, you just stayed in. Don, 112, 79 again, all right, 500, all right. So, uh, all right, sorry, 50. Okay, now you don't get, okay, I got never got one. I got it. 
uh, you don't get them during the alerts. That's why you got to pay attention during this during the uh, session recap. We go through all these trades beforehand. All right. Oh, okay, that made more sense. Okay. All right. So, uh, gosh, what do you want to call it, you guys? You guys tell me. Uh, there's so many traders made money on it. I can't scroll off the screen for me. All right. 75, okay, you know, Ozzy will call it 75 pips. Nice job, everybody. As you can see, there are low guys and there are high guys. We throw the low ones out and the high guys out, all right? All right, so there we go, all right? So, uh, it depends on where you get the entry, all right? So, some people go, oh my gosh, I missed that trade and they get in late. Uh, still, if you know where the target is, you can go. All right, EuroCAD, it is uh, retraced right now. There's nothing for us to do until we get a bounce, all right? And, and our charts are telling us, be wary of the bounce, all right? Let me tell you why. Let me show it to you here. We see this is curling over. The 30 minutes already going to the downside. We got red here, we got red here, and we got red here, all right? So what does that tell us? Watch for the breakout to the downside. So we'll wait and come back here. If we break out and take this support out here, we will trade this trade this morning on the uh, the EuroCAD all right, to the downside. All right. So we will be interested, but it's not here yet. Okay. So there we go. All right. Now, CAD yen. CAD yen was a breakout to the downside. We anticipated that. Some of you might have got 30 pips. Some of you may have got 60 pips. How many got any of that? Okay. All right. Anybody get any of the CAD yen? All right. 33 pips, Stephen. All right, so Stephen's the only one that got it, okay. 29, Phil, 34, John, Robert, okay. Got stopped out, Malcolm. All right, yeah, you had to be quick on your on, on this one because it, it went to the first target, which was right there, to the target. Notice that when we go to a target, we say we're going to go to this target and move our stop. That's why, because that's what could happen, all right. So, all right, good job, everybody who got that. Let's just call that 23 pips uh, for Tom. We'll take Tom's uh, CJ. All right, 23 pips. All right, that was a tough trade right there, folks. Tough trade. All right, but we did make money on it. Right, nice job. So what's happening now? We're driving straight back up. We need to watch this one. Uh, if it turns and makes a turn to the downside, we're going to be very interested. But it it's, uh, might break out. What does the chart tell us trying to do? All right, so this is when the charts help you. What does this tell you? We're trying to go up. What does this say? We're trying to go up. What does this say? We're trying to go up. What does this say? We're trying to go up. So what are we doing? We're trying to go up. All right. Take them at their word. We'll wait and see if we get a breakout here. If we do, we'll redo the chart. All right. If we don't, though, and it's just, just, just a corrective move to get up in here, everybody can see this big area right here that we will trade to the downside if it happens. But we've got to be very careful of it. All right. All right, New Zealand yen. All right, New Zealand yen, it did break out, but it didn't break support. We were looking for the trade to the downside. If it could break support, it has not done that during the night. But right now, we are, we are te testing doing that, okay? So right here is the opportunity. If we can get this NJ this morning, we will be interested in the NJ to the downside, all right? Pound New Zealand. Pound New Zealand, uh, it is telling us that we are sitting on the sidelines. There's nothing to do here. We're stuck inside a wedge. All right, so when you're stuck inside a wedge, what do we do? We run. All right, we don't want to be stuck inside a wedge. All right, so you can see the wedge is running right like this. All right, so don't trade wedges. Wait for them to break out. All right, All right. Use, uh, silver, for those of you across the pond who can, we're waiting for a breakout of the bull flag. Right now it's not giving us, so there's nothing today on, the X, on XAG. Still buying dollars, that's good. Pound chief. Pound chief was yesterday's trade, and then the set, uh, and everybody made a lot of money on this trade yesterday who traded this. This is a big trade right here. Then, we talked about this last night. If we can break this 4161, we're coming down to 1270. Where did we go to the 1270? How many took the pound chief down to the 1270? All right. All right. 152. All right. Anybody else? Michael Anthony, the only person who traded it, pound chief. 115, Mike, nice job, Mike. Anybody else? 120, Navi, nice job and counting, way to go. 110, Josh, nice work. Anybody else? 180, Sean, woo, way to rock and roll it, Sean. Nice job. All right. uh, yeah, that's why we like it, Mr. D. Big spreads mean there's no dumb money in here. Uh, so, all right. Uh, Adriana, 120. Anybody else? All right. So, uh, 
Yeah, it's on a smaller time. We'll get through that. We're just trying to find to get through the currencies right now. Let's call it 110 on the GC. All right. 110 pips. All right. All right. Pound Aussie 2 to go, folks. Okay, Pound Aussie has continued to move up the hill. Let's take it down to a 60-minute chart. Nothing really for us to do here at all. We're at the top of a channel, so we'll need a pullback before we can trade the Pound Aussie. And last is the Euro New Zealand. We're waiting to get up in this area up in here. It has not gone up into this area at all. We need this trade right here. That's what we're looking for this morning, if we can break up to there. All right. All right, so that's the Euro New Zealand. So. All right, we've narrowed this down to a few currencies now. Now we'll go back and look at them, all right? So first one we're going to look at is the euro, all right? The euro, if we can break this support, we're coming down probably all the way to 31.54. So we will be interested in this trade uh, down to 31.54. So let me pull this back up here. And uh, we're going to have to break 32.30. We've already tested breaking that, so it's not here yet. Uh, so they're trying to break it, but they're not successful yet. And you can see down here on the 10-minute chart, we have a sideways move. All right, so that tells us we're going to have to break the, the rectangle here. There's a rectangle. We've got to break the rectangle to the downside. We need a break, a hook, and a go. Then I have to get our stop moved by 3,200. So we need the break and the hook. All right, so we're up here around 20 for that. When we get that, we're going to be trading it down to here. We're going to move our stop at 3,700. On the break of 3,700, we double our position for 31.54. All right, so there's about a 70 pip trade there. We're very interested in that. Even though it's a euro, I hate the euro, but we'll watch it. Pound is a much better trade, as you can see. If we can break this 51.36 PSR, it's already taken the target out, so we've got to be down below for 51.30. All right, we'll have 30 pips to move our stop to the 5100. All right, now we need a roadmap on this, so let me get out of the 60 minute chart and see where I can get a roadmap. All right, what is a roadmap? It is where I move my stops. I take a swing low, swing high that is, that is printed here, and I take that and I, what's going on here? There we go. Swing low, swing high. Yes, gosh, got it. I'm having trouble this morning. All right. All right, so there's the roadmap. All right. We will go down to this this area is the support the area we're looking to go for. If we get the trade, we move our stop at the 270. We move our stop at the 618. We move our stop at the day chart top tight. That is the day chart bottom, and we'll try to stay in all the way down to 49.88. All right. So there you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So everybody understand that? If you can't see what I'm looking for, go up to the left hand side here, and you'll see it tells you which currency it is. British pound right here. I'm on the British pound. That's our opportunity. For those of you who are new in here, we will only trade in the wide open spaces. That's the place we trade. We don't trade any place else. All right. All right. That's it. Don't trade unless you've got a wide open space. All right. Why did this trade work yesterday? Because we had a wide open space. If we get this opportunity today, why will this work? Because we have a wide open space. This is where the big boys want to trade. So they position the market to get to those spots, and then they trade them. All right. So there we go. All right. Yeah, we will have a, wide, a webinar tomorrow on it. For those of you, we'll post the link at the end of the day. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Pip. All right. So you need to register for that event. Thank you, FX. All right. So, all right. All right. We don't have a stop yet because we do not have a trade yet, Mohammed. We don't have a stop till we get a trade. We'll figure it out when we get it. We don't. We're, we're waiting for the real estate. Right? We never just take a trade on the break. We wait for it to break hook. Then we go see what the stop will be. Right? Everything is recorded, Erica. Okay. All right. That takes care of that. Uh, the Swissy we're interested in, and also, uh, but we have to redo this chart. Give me a minute. And I'll come back to this and we'll redo the chart. Aussie dollar. All right. Aussie dollar right here. If they continue to sell dollar buy dollars, we should see a break of the 618. If we see a break of the 618, it becomes pretty clear that our trade is down to the 1270 fib right down here. All right. I need to put a couple of HSIs on here, so I'm going to put an HSI from this top right here. This is a proprietary tool that we developed to find the targets. All right. So uh, yes, yeah, so you have to bank anything we get this morning has to be banked uh, this morning. That's why we probably will not get many trades today, if any, because of that. 
All right, so let me see where our target is. That was our target. All right, we got a big target way down here. Man. All right, so let me get the next one on. I'm going to take, I don't get much room there. I don't have anything to do there. Okay. All right, we're waiting for this break down into this area right here. Let's take it to a 60 minute chart and see how we might get that. All right. Remember, this is a trade from yesterday. Worked pretty nicely, as you can see. All right, the break of the bear flag brought the money in. Everybody see this? I'm trying to help you understand. It's not, it, it is, will not help you to know what to do. What helps you is knowing why you do what you do, all right? So uh, we will, Franco, that's what we're doing right now. We are going to them why we're doing what we're doing, all right? So a break here shows us that the money comes in, it goes to the target, pulls back up, and down she goes to our next target. We are only target traders. We will never trade unless we know where the exit is. The exit is right here. I, I need to have a road map that tells me if I get this trade on, where do I move my stops? So what do I do? I go, I go on a 60 minute chart and find the swing low, swing high on this chart and click it. And that gives me these, these Fibonacci extensions to the downside. So now I know exactly if I get this trade, I will have to have a break, a hook, and a go. And as I get to the 270, I move my stop down to break even. When I pass through the 270 and approach the 618, I move my stop above the 270. If I break below here, I'm going to double my position, <coughs> and we will move our stop. Once it gets going down to here, we'll move our stop to here, above here. And when we hit the 8,000, we're going to move our stop very tight, and then we'll be good. All right. So there you go. That's how you're going to trade it. All right. We've got to have a strategy for every one of them. How do you confirm a breakout? You have to have a break, hook, and go. We will see one this morning if we get one, and you'll see it. All right, so, uh, all right, so that's the Aussie. We're interested in the Aussie. We're not interested in anything except for now uh, the, or the EJ. Well, we have to redo the EJ. The GJ, if we get the sell. All right, so let's go to the GJ and take a look at it down here in a lower chart now. All right, I'm on a 60-minute chart. You can see we're, we're trying to make a turn here over to the other side. So let's take this down a little lower, all right? To a lower chart, we, we know the big we know where the big picture is. Don't forget, we don't trade the 10 minute chart, we don't trade the three minute chart, we trade the 240 and the 60, but we make our entries on the 10 minute chart. All right. So uh, we're looking for that opportunity, and we can see here's the wide open space, folks. Everybody see that's a wide open space. Because it's a wide open space, it's enticing to the big boys. All right, all right. Break hook and goes on a 10 minute chart. If it's going fast, Amos, it'll be on. A, we'll go down to a three minute chart. We need to nail the entry as uh, because we have small margin accounts, so we got to nail the entry because we don't, can't put 100 pip stops on this stuff. All right. All right. So we're looking for that right down there, and we got one, two, three, 100 pips here. So we are definitely interested in this GJ for 100 pips. What does it got to do? Let's see what it's got to do. We got to have a strategy. All right, so we're building a, a, a bear flag right now. As you can see, there's a bear flag being built. A break of the bear flag and, and take the support out. All right? I'm telling you what you got to do. It's got to break that, and it's got to take this support out right here. Once it does that, we look for a break, a hook, and then a go, and we'll pick up uh, about 80 pips instead of 90. All right? So there you go. Yes, it is, uh, Yuli. All right. So that's the opportunity on the GJ. We like that one. All right? New Zealand. All right, New Zealand, we're still in this trade from yesterday. We're just letting it go. If, you're, if you missed this trade, we need a break, hook, and go. So we got a break right now. We're looking for the hook and the go. So let's take this down to the 10-minute chart, all right, and there's the hook. All right, so where's the break? To the downside. Here is what they had to break was this bottom right over here. There's the break to the downside. Here's the hook back up. Now we're waiting for the sell. Our first target is here. Our second target is down here in the bottom of the channel. All right, so the first target, from right here, it's going to 16. So it's about 40 pips down here for trade one is right here. Trade two is below here. That's trade two. So we're very interested in that. These are what we call, uh, these are two stacked wide open spaces on top of each other. We call them snowman. We always want to trade snowman. All right, looks like this. There we go. All right. So trade one is here, trade two is here. How do we trade that? One third of our lots here, two thirds of our lots here. That way, if you're wrong, you'll be wrong small, but if you're right, you'll be right big. All right, there we go. So there we go. All right, that takes care of the majors, and over on the minors, we're interested in the Euro CAD. 
to the downside. If it will break, it's not here yet. All right, we're interested in the CJ, but it has to tell us which way it's going to go, and it's not here yet. All right, the New Zealand yen, we're waiting to see if it will break to the downside. We have come out of the wedge. Everybody can see we're in a wedge, and we came out of the wedge to the downside. So now we're interested in this trade. Everybody can see that the first target is here. All right, I'll show you how we get the targets on if you'll let me get through all this. That's our first opportunity. Our second opportunity is here. All right, so there we go. We've got another snowman. So we don't want to miss a snowman. All right, so there we go. All right, all right. so that's what we're looking for right there. Let's go down to a 60-minute chart. And uh, you can see we haven't shaken off the, the, the buyers yet. Uh, we're continuing to move the downside. We need a, a clean break, hook, and go of this 7,800. Uh, 7, all right, the first target is 77.50. So it is 50 pips down there. All right, so we'll wait and see if we get that. It's not here. And don't forget, it's FOMC day today. So it, nothing may happen this morning. Be aware of that. Nothing may happen. Yeah. All right, and uh, the last trade we're looking for over here is the uh, pound New Zealand. All right. And the pound New Zealand has got to prove what it's doing. Right now it's in a wedge, so there's nothing for us to do on the pound New Zealand until it proves what it's doing. All right. And right now it has not proven what it's doing. But you can see we're in a big wedge. So what do we do when we're in a wedge? We get the heck out of it. All right. Uh, no. All right, so we're waiting for a web. What, no, something happening here, but what it is ain't exactly clear. All right, if we get the sell, everybody can see it will be a great opportunity. We got about 120 pips down here. All right, all right, so that's the currencies. That's what we're gonna do. All right, now next stop is we got to go do the Swissy. All right, I got to figure out where it's going. I don't trade a currency unless I know where it's going. All right, uh, yeah. I'll <laughs> All right, so this is how you do it, folks. Everybody pay attention. This is how we get the wide open spaces. Now, some of you are going to say, well, that's an awful lot of lines on the charts. Yes, it will be an awful lot of lines on the charts. That's it. But when the lines are on the charts, you now know where the wide open spaces are. And you will only trade where there are no lines. All right. So we go up to the daily, and we've got to define the top and the bottom first. Well, it's pretty easy to see up here that this is the top right here. That's the top of the day chart. All right. So I'm going to change that to pink because I like to be in touch with my feminine side, and I also like to uh, know that it came from the day chart. So everything is pink comes from the day chart. I'm going to create a clone, and I'm just going to simply drop this down until my eyes say that's the bottom. I'm looking left to right, left to right, left to right. And my eyes say there's the bottom. Now, no magic about this. What what makes me say that's a bottom? Right there. There's a top right there, and there is a bottom right there. All right. So that's what tells me this is my next bottom I'm having to look for. If we're going to go to the downside, that would be good. Now, what's the problem? We know that they're buying dollars today, and they're going to the upside. All right. So uh, what we got to do is we're going to see what that looks like here in the day chart. We can all see that if we connected these lines right here, from the, we would have uh, a bottom right here, which may be the bottom. All right? They may not get all the way to the bottom. All right? It may be the bottom for this real estate of today. All right? So there that is. And then we look over here, and we can see that we also have one right here. So we're inside a wedge. All right? On the day chart, we are inside a wedge. Uh, so we already know something. We're not going to trade this, but we still got to know where it's going. All right, now we get down to the 240 chart. All right, so there's our wedge right there. Now, on the 240 chart is where we find our trend. All right, the trend is only found on a 240 chart. All right, uh, because I, I, I it's, it's an experienced thing, uh, Nick. It's an experienced thing. I look at it. Uh, there's the two bottoms right there. Very, I could very easily do this one. Either way, it won't matter. I'm still in a wedge. I could very easily come across here like this and go across this right there. And see, I could do that. Either one of those is going to still prove the wedge. See? Uh, all right. So we have, if we can break through all this, we know where the bottom is. It's another 50 pips down. All right. But right now, we're not sure. I think I'll take this one off just so it doesn't confuse people. All right. So there we are in this wedge. The trend. What is the trend? The trend is down. 
right? So we're going to connect the dots here. Very important how you do the trend. You find a resistance and a support. It has to be anchored on a support, and we have to prove the heart line once we do that. The market has got to tell us we know exactly where that heart line is because we don't know that this bottom is actually the bottom, but if they prove the heart line, which is 50%, there are two parts to every trade the trend. There's the 50% above, and there's the 50% below the trend. Most traders would not do this. What they would do is form fit this, and therefore they never catch the bottom half. They'd run the trend across the bottom of these wicks and say that's the trend. You would be wrong. All right? So uh, right there. So we cannot be a buyer until we get up to the top here. All right? So this would be the start of the very next wave to the upside. I need Fibonacci's from here. So I'm going to go on the 240 chart. Everything we do is a 240. Why? Because we trade the 240 chart. Uh, all right, everybody see now? All right, so we're now looking for, these are targets for the big boys. They know where every one of those fibs is. That's a big boy target, all right? So why did I start the fib here? Because there's a swing low, swing high. I'm looking for, I'm looking for, this is the area I'm anticipating going into, all right? Bryce, that's the area I'm anticipating where I'm going into. So uh, because of, of the attempt to break this, all right? So if I break this, I want to know where I'm going up here. All right, we're on, go up here and look in the left. It's a dollar Swissy, Joey. All right, always look up here. You'll see exactly what it is and what, what minute chart I'm on. All right, so those are potential targets to the upside. They're not the target yet, but they are a target. All right, next up, hardest thing for traders to understand. I got to find my ceiling. Where is my ceiling? All right, it is, we will do a webinar tomorrow on it, Frank, so you can go through the whole thing. All right. All right. Could you ask folks if they understand the day chart, then the 240, then the 60? Okay. Everybody understand that we start on the day chart, then we work our way down to the 240. We do all of our analysis on the 240, and then we go down to the 60 and see if there's anything that we miss. All right. So I've gone from the day chart, and then I went down to the 240 chart. Uh, we're looking to see it break up. All right. And we, because we know several things today, Nick, they're buying dollars. All right. Are they buying dollars today? Yes. When I looked at the chart, what does this tell me? We're trying to go up, 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 and we're trying to go up. Can you see that? So what does the chart tell me? Look for it to try to go up. I got to be prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for that because we've been in a cell. So right now I'm trying to figure out where it would go if it did break. Because if it breaks, I want to trade it if I have a trade. All right? So... Uh, yeah, when we get a chance, let me finish all this. All right. we'll, we'll still do them. All right. So this is the hardest thing for traders to get. I've got to go find my ceiling. What is my ceiling? It's resistance over here. So what is it in the, in the past? It'll be support. So I'm looking for supports in an uptrend in the area I'm about to go in. All right. So everybody can see this is the area I'm anticipating going in, and here is an uptrend in that same area. Everybody see that? All right, so what I'm looking for is the supports that create higher highs, right? which, which basically says we kept the trend in, in effect. So my first one is right here. There's a support there that created this higher high. All right, when I look over here, I don't have one there, but I do have one right here, creates that higher high. This one creates that higher high. This one right here creates that higher high. This one right here creates that higher high. And do we have any up here? Yeah, we got uh, yeah, one right there. All right, supports are to the left, to the right of a candle, and one right there. All right, notice I got one heck of a big wide open space here. Since I have that big a wide open space, I'm going to have to check to make sure there's nothing in there, and I got another big one down here. So I'm going to go to to a, a uptrend even further back. All right, so I can see right here that now my current price is right here, and I do have a support here. See, if I didn't go back there, I wouldn't know where that was. There's one right there, created that higher high. There's also one right there. There's one right there, creates that higher high. There's one right there. All right. Notice that's shortened everything down quite dramatically. All right. All right. So now I know where I'm going to the upside. But this could still break to the downside. So what do I need to know? Where is the, the support to the downside? All right. I mean, the resistance to the downside, which will give me support over here. So there is a resistance right here, right on that set of twins that created that lower low. All right, and now we can see that it actually was used as support. Can everybody see that? Pop this up here. 
All right. So that is why they used this. That was a, that was a resistance, which was support, and that's what stopped the movement. All right. That's why you got to know where they are, folks. All right. So I got to go find see if I have any more in a downtrend over here. That's a retracement. Doesn't count. Okay. Here we go. We got a downtrend right in here. My current price is right here. I'm looking for resistance that creates a lower low. Resistance that creates a lower low. And I can see I'm down below my bottom. I don't have to find any more below that. All right. So if this is the start of the next move to the upside, this will be the first time the wave, the first wave of the Elliott wave to the upside. So I'm going to mark that with the HSI target tool. This is a tool that we developed to find the targets. It's proprietary to us. Don't ask what it does because it's, it's a secret. Okay. Uh, so there we go. All right. Now we now know where our opportunity is. Okay. When we get a breakout right here, all right, we get a breakout right here and it hooks back down. We can't trade it because we're going to trade it right into this wedge right here. So our first chance to trade is right here. Can everybody see that? That's our first opportunity to trade. Everybody see it? So we won't trade until we get into that area. Uh -huh. You could. I'm just doing it. Uh, I, I just all I care about is that they're that they are. Uh, I know it's a real low my price or sell, but you could do that. A lot of traders do that uh, exactly. Right. So. I now know that the first place I get an opportunity to trade is above 63, uh, 63, uh, 93.44. That's too close to a 93.50, so I have to be above a 93.50. That's my opportunity to trade right there. If it breaks out, I will not have a trade till then. So that, so that's how we do it. Now you say that's an awful lot of lines. Yes, it's an awful lot of lines, but it's the opportunity between the lines was where you have. That's where your opportunity is, not into the lines. Most traders don't do the work. And so because they don't do the work, they trade right into a line. They get whacked. The currency hits the line. That was their target. And they uh, exit their trades, and you get stopped out. All right? How many times has that happened? Over and over and over again. Why did it happen? Because you traded at a spot you never should have traded at. All right? So that's how it works. All right? All right. So now let's go back and see if anything has happened since we did that. But that's how we that's how we define where we will go. There is no rocket science there, folks. Absolutely no rocket science at all. Rocket science in the forex. Anybody can learn this. All right. If the trade gets on and gets close to happening, we will then go down to the 60-minute chart and plot the roadmap, which is where we will move our stops. All right. Sorry, didn't want to do that. If the trade goes, but as you can see, we got another 40 pips to go before we ever get there. So it's probably not going to happen today. But guess what? If it doesn't happen today and they do that, this is the trade we'll look for tonight. We know where it's going to happen. All right. Uh, Julian, we do. Yeah, there are, there are tons of them. But just hang in the room. Your job is to hang in the room and absorb it. Become a sponge. All right. Everybody wants to go so fast, so fast, so fast. What's important here is not how do you do it, but why do you do it, all right? See that? That's what's important. Why are we doing what we're doing? We're doing what we're doing because that's what the big boys do. The problem is you and I can't trade with the big boys. Why? Because we don't have uh, multi-million dollar accounts with, and we can trade without stops. See? That's it. So, uh, a nice job, Kiran. All right. Uh, all right. So we'll need to see the break of 93.50 to the upside. And if it, it, even if we break, we, we could hit the 93.50 before. See, we could hit 93.50 right here. That doesn't mean anything because we're in a wedge. See the wedge right there? So we've got to get out of the wedge, pull back down to the 93.50. That's a break, a hook, and a go, and there's our trade. Everybody see that? Uh, no, we don't. Bryce, we only trade with the trend. 80% of the money is made with the trend. Only 20% of the money is made against the trend. All right. Now, we have traders who can do that because they're advanced traders. All right. This is down. That's why we're not trading it. We're not trading it until we get a buy. All right. That's exactly correct, Bryce. We had to go figure it out. That's why we still have a downtrend. But our charts are telling us don't expect the move to the downside. All right. Don't expect that. Let me show you why. That is the day chart uh, trend line right there. See, 
So there's no room for the big boy to make that trade. But we're prepared if they decide, you know what, we are going to sell this sucker anyway. We're prepared to go all the way down to here if it happens. All right? We're prepared for both ways. All right? But we're not anticipating the sell. We're anticipating the buy. And the reason we're anticipating the buy is the attempt that they're doing right now to break this to the upside. And that's when these oscillators and these charts down here help you keep you out of a bad trade. You can see they're all pushing up. All right? They are telling us we're trying to go to the upside. All right? So we were not prepared for the upside, so we had to get prepared for it. And that's why I... Uh, Took everything off the chart. I still left the downtrend that was on there because I need to know that it breaks out and goes, but I still got a wedge here. So because I know there's a wedge, I can't trade inside the wedge. I got to trade outside the wedge. Right. Now, that should be very logical to everybody because trading is logical. All right? It's complex, but it's not complex, uh, uh, complicated. All right? no. That's exactly right. Don't become an indicator junkie. Tony's got it right. Do not trade indicators. Trade indicators are used to feed you information. That's it. All right. Uh, no, we don't. We don't set an exit premise. We move our stop. We want the market to take us out, and it's more about um, uh, psychological than anything else. Okay. So it was the. Uh, is the British pound uh, break break hook and go? It's hard for me to keep up with this, folks, because uh, they, the questions scroll off the the, the um, chat box too quickly for me to even see them. I'm watching the charts and then I look over here and, and I, I missed your question. So don't don't take it personally. It's not that I'm trying to miss your question. I'm not trying to do that. It just scrolled off the thing and I never saw it. All right. So uh, yeah, we're having a break. Let's go down to a lower chart to the 10 minute. Yeah, there's a break and a hook back up. So there's a break and a hook. See, we got red, red candles down as they try to break it. They did take the target out. Now they're pulled back up looking for more sellers. Why would they do this? Are there, will anybody, any professional seller, sell at the target? Any professional seller, would he sell at the target? That's a question. No, he won't sell at the question. All right. Who will sell at the, at the target? Dumb money because they don't know the target's there. The dumb money will sell there, and that because that they know the dumb money doesn't know that that line is there. They will take the take the trade in there, and then the market will go straight back up, which does two things: it stops out the dumb money. Number one, number two, it comes up here where the sellers are waiting for the next trade to the downside. And if you don't believe that, all you got to do is look at a chart. When they finish off, they go up to go down. When they finish off, they go up to go down. All right. When they finish off, they go up to go down. When they finish off, they go up to go down. When they finish off, they go up to go down. All right. So if we're going to get this downtrend, that's why we wait for a break, a hook, and now we're looking for the go. What is the go? The go is when we turn bright red, like you see right here, bright red with an arrow on this candle. That tells us we got enough traders in the market to help us go. All right. Our target on this one is several. Our overall target is 5025, which is the day chart bottom. All right? And this Fibonacci is target one. This Fibonacci is target two. This even number 5050 is target three. And the overall target is the day chart bottom. This is where we'll move our stop here. We'll move our stop here. And we will move our stop here. And Prentice, we will move our stop very tight right in here. All right? The reason is, well, here's why. If you click this thing out right here, and then it goes down 40 more pips and takes that out. What, do you, what, what happens to you psychologically? You go, oh, man. Who is responsible for missing those pips? You were. All right. All right. Now, if you, if you move your stop, the market takes you out and then goes 40 more pips. Who is responsible? The market. What can you do about that? Nothing. The market's going to do what it's going to do. See? All right. So there we go. All right. Uh, the profit uh, shoots up. That's a great question, Michael. The, the profit shoots up because our traders have been with us for a while. As they first start off, you know, they get 25, 30, 35 pips. But as they get their skill level up, they, uh, they continue to uh, amass more pips because they're, they learn the discipline of staying in a trade to the target. And so that's what ends up happening. It all right. The other thing is we grow. 
Uh, we're, we have more traders this year than we did last year. We have more traders last year than we had the year before. So we have more traders being successful, and they're more disciplined and better traders, and so the market goes up. Now, there's no way any one trader, well, I couldn't say that. We do have a couple of traders who do it, but and there's no way any one trader gets 25,000 pips, which is what we got right now. What they got is, well, 40 traders took these three trades and didn't take the other two trades. But over here, 30 traders took those other two trades. So that's why it's, you know, it's important that it's our trader's record, not my record. But what is important? But it's also important to be realistic. You can't get 25,000 pips unless you took every single trade that we did, which is not possible. You don't have the margin account to do it or anything. You have to pick and choose what works for you. All right. All right. Uh, so, what the trigger is on the British pound? We're waiting for a bright arrow and a painted candle. All right. Can everybody see that? We need momentum to come in here. We need money. See, when money comes in, it looks like that. When money comes in, it looks like that. See, that's what it is. And when money comes in, they're going. If the if it, this gets a white dot on top and a bright arrow painted candle, we're going to go 55 pips. See. Uh, so there we go. Um, 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 bear flag is a methodical move, uh, uh, Mike. All right, you need to go practice bear flags. Uh, it takes 300 bear flags minimum done at one time and then 24 hours off after you do them. If you do 300 at one time, that question will not be a question anymore. See, and that tells me you just haven't done enough bear flag work. So you just got to go do it. I mean, everything you do, you got to practice, all right? So we don't know, Fadi. We have no clue. It's going to have to be below 5150. Other than that, we don't know anything yet. And everybody wants to know what it is. And I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I wait for the chart to tell me. I just trade the charts. The charts tell me when the most opportune time to make a trade is. As long as I know where the exit is, then I can decide, I can decide whether I want to make that trade. So the decision to make a trade is not whether I got a trade set up. The decision to make a trade is do I have risk for reward. All right? So I don't know where this entry is going to happen, but I, do, I know one thing right now. I know where my stop's going to have to be. My stop's going to be, have to be five to seven pips above here. So we're going to have to be up here at uh, 51.77, all right? So if this candle goes all the way down here in one candle, all right, and this is now my next target, can I make this trade? No, I can't make the trade because my risk will be greater than my reward. So I don't know what it looks like yet. That's why you have to be willing to wait and discipline. Traders all want, please tell me where to get in. You are the trader. The job of the charts is to say this is the most opportune place to get in, but the decision to make that, a trade setup is not a trade. See? So, Beto, that's a, uh, uh, we, trade, we enter on the 10-minute chart, but we don't trade the 10-minute chart. We trade the 240 and the 60. That's what we do. No, there isn't because you get too many false positives. All right? We only pay attention to that blackjack when it's in the session. All right? So, there you go. Norman's got it. The biggest discipline is to learn to sit on your hands and wait. That's what we're doing on the British pound. And don't forget, we'll probably wait all day. Why? Because we have FOMC this afternoon. All right? Traders, all traders who are professionals are extremely reluctant to put a trade on before FOMC. All right? That's what they are. They're extremely reluctant to do that. All right? So, I'm, I'm doubtful that we will even see a trade. All right? But we may, and we're ready if we do. All right? You can see right here in the New Zealand, the big boys just popped in. All right? How do I know that? You see that white dot right there? Now, if that dot prints, all right, it could go away if that dot prints. This is, what this is, this white dot, is this right here on a 60-minute chart. We're looking behind the scenes up at the 60-minute chart, and when this happens, we're bringing it down. Why? Because we trade the 240 and the 60. All right? So that's why. All right? So if we get this opportunity and it turns bright red, we've had a, here's the, here's the, the support they had to break. All right, so they broke it, pulled back up, and tried to go and weren't able to go. So we've got a second hook. Now, now the big boys say, okay, let's get this thing going, and they put, they put money in enough to make it happen on a 60-minute chart. All right, but that doesn't mean we'll get follow-through. All right, down we go if we get it. All right, so we're interested in that. All right, not here yet, folks. Most, trade, most traders just don't understand that the trade has got to come to you. Is it not a real possibility that they do this? With FOMC, is it not a real possibility that they do this today? 
Well, everybody agreed that that's a real possibility today because of FMC. Yeah, see? So they may be building a, a, just a rectangle. What, what, why do they build a rectangle? They're building a rectangle that's printed now, okay? They're building a rectangle to tell everybody this is how they talk to each other. They talk to each other on the charts. They're telling everybody, yes, we went up, but boys, we're really going down. That's why we're building a rectangle. So stay with us because we're going to the downside, all right? There are 10 bankers who make this happen. And the follow-through comes from the 500 to 800 other banks and hedge funds who join in once the big boys make the trade. All right? So I'll show you who those big boys are. All right? All right? So you should all be able to see that now. All right. Deutsche Bank is 15.8% of the market. Citibank is 14.9. Right there is 30% of all the trades made in the Forex are done by two banks right there. Everybody see that? Yeah, that's right. It's from all our traders. We average what they get. As we saw, if you were here earlier today, you saw, you know, we had, uh, like on the GC, 110 pips was the average. We had some traders that did 200 trades, 200 pips, and some of them did 40, all right? So we don't we don't use everybody's trade. We just average it and put it in there. Right? That's it. That means if the big boy comes in and puts money in, right? That doesn't mean anything. It just means the big boy's here. We're waiting for the follow through. Will the 500 to 800 banks join in? If they will join in, then we'll see the move. If they won't join in, then we won't see the move. Well, guess what? Why would a big boy? Pop a white dot up here. Why would one of these guys do that? Why would they? Because they're trying to tell everybody, boys, we're not going up. I know you see those green candles, but we're not going up. So they throw some money in to keep it from going up so everybody knows we're trying to move this to the downside. You've got to learn the language of the charts. All right? If you learn the language of the charts, then you can um, be successful. All right? Or at least you got a shot at it. Right? 50 minute chart. All right? 60-minute chart, it is an arrow and painted candle, money coming in from the 60-minute world. The big boys trade the 240 in the day chart, and they enter on the 60-minute chart. All right? When the big boy enters on the 60, we want to know that, because right? that's the big boy coming in. That doesn't mean we're going to get follow-through, but we at least know, hey, the opportunity might be here. All right? We don't know which bank it is. Don't care which bank it is. There's only 10 of them. All right? Please show this on the – oh, you can't see it on the 60. Okay, let me show you why, um, why you can't see this. When I'm looking on a 10-minute chart here, all right, this is a 10-minute chart, all right, the only thing on this chart that is in the 10-minute world are the candles only. This is a 60-minute MACD brought down from the 60-minute placed here, all right. All right, these moving averages, this red moving average right here is a 240-minute uh, moving average. This green one is a 60-minute moving average. Now, when we're below both the 240 and the 60, we have more sellers than buyers. Why would that be? Because the big boys trade the 240 and the 60. So that's why we define this as the desert. We don't want to trade inside the desert at all because the big boys aren't here. But when we have 240 and 60 are both down and we have candles below them, we know we have more sellers than buyers. It's going to be very difficult for buyers to, to overwhelm the sellers. All right? So we're looking for only a sell. All right? All right. Uh, this big red line. Uh, is a uh, hold on. I mean, I'll pull it up to a higher chart. All right. So let me finish that up. Okay. The, these little moving averages you see right here is a 30-minute moving average. All right. So there we go. Most uh, most retail traders trade a moving average crossover. There's the moving average crossover right there. Where would you have entered? Right there. All right. Notice where our signal came. We got a signal here. It's too late for us. All right. See, you enter down here and you got four pips and then it goes against you. All right, so moving average crossover, although they look great when you look at them in the past, they're very difficult to trade. In my opinion, they're a trading suicide. We mark it for you, but we don't trade it, and we don't teach it. All right. uh, we're not talking about robots in here, Henry. Uh, just walk away from robots. You're throwing your money away when you trade with a robot. They put money in and out. Exactly right, John. Remember, they, their agenda is totally different than yours. Right? That's correct, Rob. 
and use the 240 to find the wide open spaces. Why do we want to find that? We want to see what the bankers are looking at. What are the bankers looking at? They're looking for wide open spaces. See? All right. So, I used the R90 trades before FLMC. I don't, I don't think we'll see a trade, but this is a good time we can talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what we do, why we're doing it. Let's just check them all here that we're looking for. We're looking for the pound New Zealand, and pound New Zealand is not in a place where it's going to break yet, and I doubt that it'll break before FOMC, all right? And we're interested in the CAD yen, and we're interested either way it goes, and it's not going to do anything. It's going the opposite way that we need to go, which is down, all right? New Zealand yen, it's just sitting there sideways doing nothing. We will take the breakdown in here if it happens, but they're just sitting there going sideways. Why? FOMC is today, all right? <clears throat> and the Euro CAD, all right, we're waiting for it to break above into this area up here. Uh, everybody should see, see all these targets were taken out over here. These are all targets that are taken out. Even the day chart top was taken out. So the real trade is back to the day chart top, but we got to know where to move our stop. So we'll move our stop. When we get the trade, if we break above here or here, we we'll move our stop here at the even number, at this one, at this even number, and here. And oh, any place we have a big wide open space, we'll double our position. Very simple. Once you got the chart set up and know how to do it and know where they are, then you'll know exactly where you should put your trade on. And you won't trade anywhere else. All right. How do you react to FOMC? We will probably have another New York session after F FOMC. I, we we have a way to trade the uh, the, the uh, announcement, and we will get an announcement this week that we can trade. Uh, we trade it on a one minute chart, but we wait for the wait for the all the jitters to get locked out of the market. But we do have a trade set up for it specifically for, for trading that. So, uh, yeah, a month in and FOMC, so there's probably not going to be anything happening today. Yeah, we do. We we do occasionally, especially if we can't find what we're looking for in a 240 or a day chart. But and we don't like to go to the day chart either because we want to trade on the 240. All right. So you'll see that I've got some targets, uh, some some uh, trends here. Uh, let me see if I can find one here. Like this now. Yeah, this euro yen. I think that's it. No. I'm looking for a pink trend. Uh, here we go. Uh, maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right. When this line for me is pink, it's because it's the day chart trend. It's not the 240 minute trend. The 240 minute trend here, although I'm on a 240 chart on the euro pound, the 240 trend here is this, and you'll be able to see it pretty easily. This is the 240 trend. All right, now what is that? That's a trip to the moon. It is unsustainable. All right, so we're waiting to see if we finish this thing off. Can we all see that the day chart top and the day chart trend are all going to apex right here in about 20 pips? That's why we won't make the trade up to there. All right, but everybody who's in this trade is hanging on, waiting for it to go 20 more pips. All right. You can ask your question now. Uh, okay. Uh, so I thought I just did that, but I'll do it again for you guys. Right. So when I'm down here in a 10-minute chart, we'll just go right here in this yo yo ya Ozzy right here. I'm going to go to a clear chart. Let me just pull one of these up. Right. So here, this is a wild card screen. This is a this is a set of. A, a, Charts that I've got all the all the uh, the the currencies of the 10-minute world. When we're looking for an opportunity that we have multiple uh, majors ready to go, we can sit here and watch them both, all of these side by side, and watch when it happens. That's what we're doing. All right, so I'm going to pull this up on a 10-minute chart, and I'm going to go line by line what each and everything is. All right, so first of all, on a 10-minute chart, the only thing on this chart that comes from the 10-minute world are the candles. That's it. And you can see there are candles that are red, and there are candles that are bright green. Bright green or bright me red means that there are momentum in those candles. Yes, there's price action, but there's also momentum. All right? Candles that have no momentum look like this. You see how dull they are, and they're all outlined. Yes, we still have price action, but we don't have momentum driving them. What is momentum? Big boys entering the follow-through. All right? That's what happens. 
All right. So that's one. This white dot is this right here from a 60-minute world. All right. But because everything on this chart is uh, is from a higher currency, a higher time frame, if we went to a 60-minute chart, the white dot would now come from a 360-minute world. So it's it's only relevant on the 10-minute world here. All right. When it when it happens, when the white dot comes. We're going to go 55 pips. All right, so we'll measure this one and see what happens. All right, so we got a little tool that allows us to do that. It says there's the limit, there's the sell. We're a buyer. Find the target 55 pips up, and as you can see, they missed that 55 pips by about eight pips. Now, why did they miss it? Because they ran into the moving average first. This moving average is a 240 world moving average. This moving average is the 60 minute world average. The area between those two is the desert. All right, that's where that is. In the desert. All right. So, lost the chat for some reason over here. Did we lose the chat? I lost the chat. I can't see any of the chat right now. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was weird. I lost the chat totally. All right, there we go. All right. All right, so now these little, this is a T3, this little blue thing here. It's a trending indicator. It is a kind of moving average, but it has very, 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 very special settings, okay? No, you need a big account to trade gold. We trade silver, but not gold, all right? Uh, um, FXCM had, can have a, 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 a difference in the feed of as much as 29 pips, Nick. It's here every day, Ben. We're here every day. Now, the other thing that we have on here, you'll see these horizontal lines, all right? These I mean, vertical lines. They measure MACD crossovers. That's this one right here. You can see that's a MACD crossover. They also measure moving average crossovers, moving average crossovers, MACD crossovers, all right? This is not tradable information, but it's good information, all right? That's what it means, all right? All right, so... Uh, the other thing here, these T30s right here, you can, can't very well see this, but right over here it says grid base. That is the pivot point for the day right there. That's the pivot point. All right. So there you go. All right. Now, this grid is built off that pivot point because, as you can see, the market knows right where that grid is. They know exactly where it is, see? They know where these grids are because these are 30 pip moves in between them. 30 pip moves in between these, all right? So that's, what the, that's what's on the charts right there. Very simple. These, these yellow lines just tell us the Dungeon Channel and just tells you where the highs and the lows are. So you don't actually have to find the candle if you want to go uh, click on a pip. All you got to do is find that, that uh, yellow line right there. All right, pound is dropping. Let's go look at it. All right. And we don't have any momentum in it, okay? So now, here's when the trade setup have to, helps you. The trade setup says we need, it to, be, we need to have um, bears in here. Well, we got the moving average. we got a blackjack. But we don't have candles below that moving average. You can see the Tom DeMarc line is saying, you got a barrier you're going to have to take out before you ever get there. And you can see that our momentum in indicator is still telling us we have too many bulls still in this, in this chart. Too many bulls in here. So... Even though the pound is dropping, there are too many bulls to overwhelm yet. So there's no reason to go jump in the trade. If we can overwhelm these, bell, uh, these bulls that are in here, this will turn first to black, which is neutral, and then it will go to, uh, to, uh, to red. We're not interested in this trade until we break below this bottom. Until it gets down to here, break, hooks, and goes, we are not interested in this trade. Because today at FOMC, they could just sit there and oscillate it up and down and up and down, which means they're still in position to make that move, but they're not going to make it till after F1C. All right. You can't trust the feed, Nick. The answer about FXCM is you can't trust the feed. We have that feed on here. We have the, I can turn this to an FXCM feed, and, and you'll see that the chart will immediately change. There you go. See? It's a different feed. Now, FXCM feed. If you if you are were one of our traders, uh, hold on. 
if you're one of our traders and you had FXCM as your broker, then you'd want to have the feed be FXCM so it matches the brokers. We use an aggregated feed. We have probably 90 brokers. We have traders in here with at least 90 different brokers right now. Right. That's true, Jacqueline. It's going to have to look perfect for us to take it. Absolutely perfect. Why? Because it's 11 o'clock right now in New York. All right. In 30 minutes from now, it's lunchtime in New York. All right. It's also London close. All right. So that's it. Uh, you know, JJ, I don't know what brokers are good. We use FXDD. I'd have to use all those brokers to tell you which one is good, and I don't use those brokers, so I haven't got a clue which are good brokers. I don't think anybody does. But I have traded with FXCM. Just stay in the room, William. We're going to spend 10 days going through it. Right. Body, I don't read any analysts. I read not one, period. Not one do I read. <clears throat> I, uh, it biases me, and I don't want to be biased. I want to be open to what the charts tell me. I never, ever, ever read a commentary. Yes, in my early days, I wrote, read a commentary, and I would believe what they said, and I would trade below 5,200 or whatever it happened to be, and then the market didn't do that. And so I quickly learned, not quickly, it took me too long, actually, that if to not read any commentaries, which I don't. Yeah, I will tell you when I trade it, I will say, enter when ready. I'm not calling any trades. The decision to make a trade is 100% yours, but we will go through the parameters of the trade, and then you're going to make the decision whether that meets your risk and reward uh, ratios, your risk appetite, whether you like the trade, whether you agree with the trade, whether you don't. All right, I'm not calling a trade. I will find the area. I will tell you how we, I would trade it if I was going to trade it. All right, I will do all that, but I will never call a trade. All right. All right. uh, everybody should look at your notes up there. Look at the notes up on the top. Uh, on the top, you'll have one that says notes, and you'll be able to see all half these questions are already answered on the notes. So make sure you look at it. That's exactly right, Corey. Euro Aussie. We'll look at that Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie has nowhere to go. All right, we're at the top, as you can see. We're here at the top. It continues to move to the top. All right, continues to move up. All right. We're out of the trend, we're out of the day chart trend, and we're out of the 240-minute trend. This is why Prentice asked earlier, do you limit? This is why you don't limit. All right. Everybody can see, if you limited here, we had a 618 in the top of the trend wall. If you limited here, you've now left 60 pips on the table. If you moved your stop, and then when you got to here, it moved your stop again, and now we're at the 1270 fib extension right here. And, and there's just no place for us to trade in here. There's just not enough room in an unsustainable trend. You see this? This is unsustainable, folks. What does unsustainable mean? That means they're going to bring it down. When they find the target, whatever that happens to be, they are going to bring it to the downside. All right? That's all there is to it. All right? And you can prove that to yourself by just going back in the past and seeing every unsustainable move, what did they do? Brought it back down. An unsustainable move brought it back down. An unsustainable move brought it back down. Unsustainable move brought it back down. Can everybody see that? So. Why would we want to jump into a trade? Because that's exactly what we're doing. Jump into the trade here, right here, for a trade that is going to find the target and it's going to sell off. And if you make that trade at the wrong time and it decides to sell off right there, especially with FOMC today, bingo, what will end up happening? You'll get stopped out. Uh, it, it, it's it's uh, aggregate feed, Karen. So it could be you know FXDD is usually within one pip. All right, could be two occasionally. All right, so there it is. All right. Every every broker is different, and every broker is different every hour. Why? Because somebody else has bid it on your business during the hour. So during the hour, maybe uh, Wachovia Bank has your trade, and the next hour. Uh, it's um, Deutsche Bank. So now you get a Deutsche Bank feed the next uh, the next hour. You know? uh, 
Yeah, you use entry orders, uh, Corey. You use an entry order. So, you know, for instance, if you want to do an entry order uh, like this one on the, this one last night, let's take this down to a 60. All right. So that's so right here. We can see right here that we're doing a sideways move, a rectangle, right here. Now, if you don't know what a rectangle is, this is what's called the pole. All right. You can see it's a flagpole right there. All right. On the break of this top right here, a, a re rectangle is a buying sign. So you're going to go higher than this one right here, put an entry order right in here, as long as you had risk and reward to the target. That would have been your target. This would have been your risk. All right? And you could have said, okay, I'm going to take an entry order above here for that and go to bed. And guess what? Had you done that, you made a lot of money. See? Uh, go check the notes, everybody. A lot of your questions are in the notes. Right, so everybody who has not read the notes, go read the notes. They're up on the top. You push a button that says notes, and it'll, it'll, it'll answer all your questions so that Pip is the fastest typist in the world, but we don't want to wear her fingers out. All right? It's already typed for you. <laughs> all right? All right? So it's already there, already waiting for you. Just read the notes. All right? Notes is blank. Can't be blank. Uh, not blank at all. All right? All right, uh, what about, uh, which one, Euro Aussie? Euro, there's no trade on the Euro Aussie, was that it? Euro Yen? Euro Yen is in transition, as you see, it's in transition. We're waiting to see if we'll get some follow through here. We've got a breakup right now, that's a good sign. All right, let's take this down to a 10 minute chart. All right, actually we missed this, down, got it? All right. But we can go to school right here. All right? What do we got here? A break, a hook, and a white dot comes in as the go. Everybody see that? Break, hook, then the go. All right? Yeah. Our target is right here. All right? Where are we? Inside the desert. Everybody see that? We're inside the desert. So we won't trade the trade inside the desert. We will take the trade on a break, hook, and go out out of the desert. Everybody see that? The desert is the area between the two moving averages. I talked about that about five minutes ago. All right? When you're below the moving average on the 240 and below the 60, you have more sellers and buyers. If you're above both moving averages on the 240 and 60, you have more buyers and sellers. If, you, if you're in between, you don't know what you have. All right? See? So, yeah, we missed it. We weren't watching it. So and that's, we, I count on traders that tell me that. So it's just we missed that opportunity right there. That would have been an opportunity. Okay, from the white dot, though, we would have been going 55 pips. So let's just see if it goes. If it's gone 55 pips, oh, surprise, surprise. 55 pips is right there. Where did they go from the white dot? 55 pips. Yeah. So we wouldn't have traded it anyway because it's inside the desert. Remember, this is the desert area. You don't trade in the desert. All right? That's where people lose their money. All right? All right, so they're going to have to square this up, and maybe they'll run again. If they run again out of the desert, we'll look at it. All right, but it's late right now on FOMC day. Uh, Pip makes a living on Asian on the Asian market, Michael. We will get all that to you, Sandy. Euro, I feel like I can see it. We're looking for a sell between 32.90 and 1.34. Let's go look at it here. Yeah, absolutely, that's what it was. Right here. Right from here down to 32.34. See? Wide open space. All right. But we're not out of that downtrend. Can everybody see this? Out of the uptrend. All right, we tried to push down to the downtrend, and we didn't get any chance to do it. We tried to get down here, we couldn't get it. So what are we doing? We have their very special shawl. We will never give those up. We won't tell you what they are because they're one of the secrets to what makes our chart and our software and our methodology work. All right. 
Yeah, we have a white dot to the downside. You can see they went 55 pips, pretty easy, but this is on a 240 chart, so that's not relevant. We've got to go to the 10 minute chart. All right, did we have one on the 10 minute chart? Before the session we did, but not in session. All right. So, you know, what are they doing with the dollar right now is a big question. All right. So you see what's happening here in the dollar. They had an effort to break out and they've given up. Can everybody see that? They had an effort to make to break it at the upside and they've given up. Now, does that now make you understand why the euro did this? All right. Can you see that right there? The euro did that. The very opposite. See? Mirror tail. What will the Swissie have done? It follows that also. So what did it do? It tried to break out and it's right back in. This is why we don't give up on the downtrend yet. Just because they make a move up there doesn't mean that anything. Hey, could y'all hold on just a second and I will be right back to you. I gotta answer my uh, door here. Hold on. I'll be right Has a FedEx man here. All right, so all right, so we don't trade in there even numbers unless we can move our stop. We'll trade into an even number if we can have 14, 15 pips to do it. All right, uh, the, the channel is, is a regular old channel. All right, any thoughts on silver? Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts on silver. Until we break out of the bear flag, there's nothing to do. All right. As you see, we're running a big bear flag here on silver. Where's the trade? The trade is when we get out of the bear flag. A bear flag is a buying sign. But the candles are going down, man. <laughs> yeah, the candles are going down because they keep bringing in. This, they can't get enough buyers to do this, but they don't want anybody, everybody to know. Boys and girls, we are not going down. We're trying to break it north. Would you come join us? All right, so that's it. So... Everything is recorded, Sergio. We record every single thing. Because we want, if, if we make a trade, people say, you didn't make that trade. Yes, there's recorded. There it is. No, you never, you never said to trade that Euro Aussie. And then we have a recording. It says, there it is. That's the opportunity. We have a recording of everything. All right? So, that's it. Notes is right up on the top. Should be a, on my side, it's a notes. It says green. It's green. And when I pop it here, let me just, I'll pull this up. So you can see what I'm looking at. I, I hit the notes button right here. There they are. Tells you when the rooms open every day. Blah blah. We send a recap of this. It was recorded, and you'll get it by email. If you miss part of the room, if you want to better understand, blah blah blah. All about our software. You will get a. All of you here will get an email tomorrow that will allow you to download the software. So wait. All right. Just wait. We wanted you to sit in here and be a sponge in the beginning. All right. Beginner questions, how can I learn all that stuff? It's okay. It's overwhelming because it's a brand new system for you. All right? But the main thing you can see is the system is better than what you're doing because you're not being successful. And when you're in a room and you see trader after trader after trader making pips after pips after pips, you realize it doesn't matter what Scott's record does. What I can trade and what I can do means nothing to you. What matters is could I get this and I start trading it. All right? So you have to be a, uh, a member, Polka. Right? So there you go. So there they are on the notes. So all you got to do is go click them, and it's right there for you. All right, so silver so waiting for a bounce up. All right, we missed the opportunity on that euro pound. Eh, kind of too bad. We did. We will take a trade. It, it's so late in the session. I'm leery of making a trade with FOMC today. Uh, pound. Pound dollar is continuing its bull flag. All right, so here's a bear flag, I should say. So what is this? It's a it's a sell sign. This is a sell sign. All right. Well, yeah, but the candles are going up, man. I want to push the button. Hey, you push the button. I didn't tell him to push the button. Did you tell him to push the button? Oh, I didn't tell him to push the button. I didn't tell him to push the button. You shouldn't just go push the button. You don't go around pushing strange buttons. I tell you, don't push the button. Don't push the button. All right. All right, so, uh, yes, absolutely, it'll be flat, absolutely flat. 
Everything is recorded. Nick, what did I say? Everything is recorded. So the question is, is tomorrow's seminar going to be recorded? What's the answer? Everything is recorded, right? <laughs> okay. That should be the last question about recording. <laughs> All right. All right, so we're waiting. This is a sell sign. It's not a buy sign. That's where traders get it wrong. They think, oh, my gosh, I should be buying this. I should be buying it. No, you shouldn't be buying it. This is an effort to get up high enough to find enough sellers to break the trade. The higher they go up here, the more room there is to the downside. So they do it in a bear flag so that all the professional traders know we're not going up. We're not going up. We're not going up. All right? All right, so we're waiting for them to make the turn. Come through the bear flag, and that will be our trade. It will probably not happen until after FOMC. Now, don't forget, FOMC chain could change everything. <clears throat> That's why everybody's waiting. Because even though this might be a down trade, a down uh, uh, trend on the pound yen, it may be waiting, you're doing a bear flag, so they're in position for it. It could totally change at FOMC and become a buy. And that's why everybody is leery of making a trade before FOMC. Right? <clears throat> All right, New Zealand, you know, we, we got a break and a hook, but we never got any follow through, all right? Now, you start seeing right now, we got a, a, a red um, arrow right there. Everybody see that? We got a red arrow, all right? And we have changed over here. We're black here, blackjack. We have an average down. Candle here. We all see the Tom DeMarc line right here that says you got a barrier to break, so don't trade it unless you break the barrier. And we see over here in the 240, it says you got a Tom DeMarc line saying there's a barrier. You got to break that before you can trade it. Everybody see that? All right. Chevy, so you're going to get all that information. Well, we can't. There are 2,000 traders in here. We can't trade. Send one email to one person. Okay, everybody's going to get all the same information at the same time. Okay, so, uh, all right. So, we are having an arrow here. We have a painted candle. All right, what's our problem? We know where the target is. It's right here and right here. All right, so there's trade one and there's trade two. The opportunity is there. <coughs> all right, do we have a trade set up? Not quite yet. If we get a trade set up, will we still have a trade? The answer is not until we break this bottom. Not until we break this bottom. Can everybody see that? Not until we break this bottom. All right. When we break the bottom, it's then we have to make a decision based on risk and reward. What if the candle comes all the way down here, right into here? All right. Can we make the trade when we only have that left? We can't make that trade. All right. It's going to have to hook back up. It would have to hook back up, and then we can make the trade from there, and then we will double our position there. You see that? But every minute that they don't move this currency, it's closer to New York close, London close, and that's before FOMC. So is the smart thing to try to take this trade now? Would that be a smart thing to do? No. It's not a trade. It's a. It could become a trade setup, but it's not a trade. All right. See. So you guys know what to do. You see. All you got to do is think through the process and go. Yeah, but if you're an indicator junkie now, you're already in. Oh man, there it is. Red arrow. I'm in. What ends up happening? All right. Done. Support in the Aussie. Uh, eighty-seven seventy-eight. Next one. Uh, yeah, we pay attention to that. We don't trade them, Nick. All right? They're information. That's what they are, information. All right? That's all they are, information. They're not trades. All right? Don't ever trade them because of that. All right? Now, it's a bear flag is a break to the downside, William. A bull flag is a break to the upside. All right? That's what they are. All right. Uh, am I? Yeah, I am. Ooh, I don't want to do that. AUD, USD. Get off that feed. 
All right, there we go. All right, so we're, we're very interested in this trade. Now, as you look at all the trades we've been looking at this morning, all right, does the Aussie dollar look like one heck of a great trade compared to everything else? Would it be, we're doing a, we're starting to build a bear flag, all right, bear flag is a sell sign. This is the opportunity right here. Is it worth waiting for? These are T30s. One, two, three, four, five, six T30s, 180 pips. That may happen after FOMC or it may happen in Sydney or Asian. Yeah, that's it. All right. So that's a trade we're going to wait for. Why don't you just get in now? Well, because it's not here yet, folks. We've got to take the bear flag out and the support out. All right. Once we take the support and the bear flag out, then we're still looking for a break hook and a go. So the bear flag's like this, it breaks that. There's the support right there. All right. It's got to break below here, hook back up, and then go. And we will take the go part right there. That's what we'll take. So you can see, you've got to do all of that before you ever get a trade on the Aussie dollar. All right. Snowman is, is two areas stacked, one on top of the other. They have wide open spaces. I'll show you one right here. Here's one right here. Here's the head, and there's the, the body. All right. Can you see them? See the snowman? That means we have two wide open spaces, one on top of the other. That means it's a two-part trade. Part one goes in here. You double your position in here, right here, for the target. So you don't limit out number one. Lot number one gets moved to break even and you sit on break even. And when you break into number two, you double your position. Now you move your stop into, into profit and then you wait for the bottom here, moving your stop on the road map. All right. We will never make a trade that we don't know the stop loss and we don't know the target. Never. You have to run it in boot camp, Felipe. I run mine in boot camp, yes. Or you can run it in parallels or, v, or v, v, VMware or something like that. Uh, virtually all financial software is designed for Windows because 5% of the market is Mac. It's only 5%. Uh, all right, so we're still waiting here. It's 1017. If we don't get a move at the 1030 bump, it's going to be over. Uh, typically, it's around 33, 34 pips. But it doesn't matter what the stop is, it's what is the reward, all right? So if we had a 48 pip reward and we had to put a 46 pip stop on, we may actually take that trade, all right? The gatekeeper is these charts down here. They're not tradable, all right? But they have to go first. That's why they're called a gatekeeper. But until these change to what you need, they keep you from opening the gate up here. Does uh, that make sense? So, yeah, it's better to buy a cheap Windows machine. Yeah, exactly right. Mm -hmm. so, thank you, John Robert, for that. Right. Ready to go, John? Yeah, after they deal with them every hour on the hour. Brokers, the big boys um, uh, do an auction every day for the broker's money. And they, they, they say, I'll give you two extra decimal points during uh, 9 to 10. And if that's better than everybody else, then the broker says, okay, well, Kobe, you have our business during 9 to 10 o'clock. And at 10 o'clock, Deutsche Bank says, you know what, I'll give you two extra de decimal points during that period of time. So that's how they make their money, you see. And they take all your trades. Uh, so you could be going. You could be at five, six different banks in a, in a course of a session. Uh, the diamonds are just money coming in. All right. So we learn to trade, so we don't it, we get them both ways. We can get them both ways. All right. So what do we care about? What are we doing? We only only care about the ones that are down, the down, the down, and the down. So these things right here are movements. They can't go anywhere. So money comes in to drive it to the upside. You see that? Does everybody see that? Money comes in to drive it to the upside so they can go down. All right? In order to go down, the market first has to go up. In order to go up, the market first has to go down. All right? Yes, you can, Jerry.
Absolutely. You can use it on any pair. Uh, we, we happen to watch these. Uh, you could watch any of them. We've chosen these over the years, so uh, we don't trade it, uh, that one. We've got 20 currencies to trade as it is. Right? We watch 20 of them, so including XAG. So uh, if you, uh, On the Aussie, if you break the 8940, let me go back up to that. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, we're going to have to be below the 89.50, and we're going to have to be below 89.44 right here. Right. So we've got to be at 89.40. So when it goes to 89.40, and then it pops back up, then we're interested in the trade if we get a go. Right now, many times you don't get a go. Right, many times it goes pops back down, oops like this, starts to go down, then it goes up. So we want to make sure we get a go to the downside. So we wait for the downside. It does that 98% of the time, folks. 98% of the time it does that. So we don't make a strategy based on what it does two times out of 100. We make a strategy based on what it does 98 out of 100. All right? uh, so, yeah, look at it, Cloudy, table. All right. So, several things that we, we can see right away. First of all, they've got to square this candle up. If you don't understand squaring up, just hang around. We'll talk about squaring up more. Squaring up, they have to square the candle up. Once they square the candle up, we'll have done this up move, which is a methodical bear flag. All right? They square up the candle. We're now in a position to go to the downside. All right? Squaring up, when they're in here, right here, the market makers have been taking buys, and they've been taking sells. When the market takes off to the downside, they're absolutely fine on the sells because they own that trade. What happened to all their buys? Are they in profit on all the buys that they took from you guys? No, they're not in profit. They're upside down. So what do they do? They drive the currency back to up here to where they can dump the buys right here. Who wants the buys? The dumb money says, oh, it's going up, man, I'm in. And the dumb money takes it off their hands. They say, thank you very much. They scream it to the downside, stop the dumb money out, and now what was before phantom profit is now two pieces of profit for them. They're pros at this. That's what they do. All right. Stock targets on the GA, sure. Well, Erica, sorry, Erica. I didn't see it. Scrolled off my thing. We're at the target right now. But if we do break here, above here, let me go up to the day chart and you'll see where you're at. All right. So there is a over here, there is a bigger target, and it actually comes from the weekly, it looks like. Yeah, from the weekly. Right. So there is a bigger target up here if they will break up in here. I'd be real leery of this at this point in time. All right, we got a one, two, three, four, five. I don't know, depends. Maybe it's a one, two, three, four, five. I, I'm not an Elliott waiver, so it might be a five way from here. I'm not sure. Okay, so if we break here, the next target is a 270 pip extension at 69.90. All right. If you're in the trade, you stay in the trade. If you're not in the trade, you don't make the trade. All right. If you're not in the trade, you don't make the trade. Why? Where are we? We're at the top. Who buys at the top? Dumb money. So if you buy here, you're the dumb money. Now, how can we trade this to the upside? All right. If it if it does, we'll have to have a break, a hook, and a go above here. Right? So we need a break, a hook, and a go up here. Right? You say, well, aren't you buying at the top? No, I'm buying at the bottom. I wait for the hook. See, there's the top. The dumb money buys up here. See, what are we looking for a hook? We're looking for a candle. Let me go down to a three-minute chart. It'll be easy to see on a three-minute. All right? All right. So, and it's the same pattern, but we want to see it on a 10 if we can. All right? So here's the break up here, bright green. Then we moved down. Can we see? We went all the way up to here, but we came back down to here. That's the hook, back down. All right, where's the go? You see the money coming in right there, bright green. Momentum comes in to take the buy. Can you see that? Anybody see that? That's a break, hook, and go. Those who took that, there's your reward. There it is. All right, what could you do here? Double your position. So there we go, and it's underway, as you can see. 
but we're at the top. We're crun crunching along above the day, day chart trend. So we could go higher. There's no doubt we could go higher. And we're going to have to be, you can also see we're at 69.50. Is 69.50 a potential uh, sell side place? Absolutely. It's an even number with an option contract on it. They could sell it back off. Is this a sustainable trend? Can they sustain that trend? No, they can't. Therefore, we're expecting them to come back down. All right. When they stop here, how do we do that? We pop up a set of fibs from the bottom of the swing low to the swing high of this move, and we look for the most opportune place for them to come down. We can see we got tops right here, right at the 50%. So if they top out here, come down to the 50% and bounce, you should take the trade at the 50% mark for that, and then above here, you should double your position. Uh, everybody see that? It becomes easy. It's all about figuring out what the currency is going to do. There is no rocket science here. There are only four or five things you got to know, but they're complicated. And because they're complicated, you can't learn them in two days. All right? You can't learn actual trading in two days. You can learn to follow an indicator in two days, but you can't learn to trade in two days. Forget it. Learn that it's going to take you longer than that, all right? And then commit to the process. Did I stretch my side? Yeah. All right, there we go. Pound yen, pound dollar. Well, they still have to square up. All right? now remember, this is following the dollar index to the other side. What do they do with the dollar index? They're selling dollars right now. They tried to buy them and break that day chart, that trend. Did they break the trend? They tested it. Did they break it? It's month end, folks. Don't forget, it's month end. They got to close their books today. See? Euro Japan. Nothing to do. Talked about this about ten minutes ago. All right. We're inside the desert. There's the desert. Right here, we're inside the desert. We've got to be outside the desert. What do we need? A break, hook, and go outside the desert. We're looking for 131.06 and maybe 131.28. What's the problem? Time of day. It is the end of the New York session and the end of the London session. All right? London, New York's going to lunch, and New York and London is quitting. And we have FOMC this afternoon. So. Pervez, it's on your side. Everybody's got uh, fine. It's your it's your computer. Right? So sound is always your on your feed. It's either your internet provider or you got too much stuff running or whatever. Right? All right. Yeah, we had an ABC to the desert. Exactly right. Sure. Nice job. Way to go. All right. Yeah. This is what a break, hook, and go looks like here. A break, a hook. And the go came with the white dot in this case. The big boys entered right there. Follow through came when they tried to break it out of the desert and they were not able to do that yet. So it's not a trade yet. All right. Now, a break hook doesn't even have, you don't have to have that. All right. You can do it on a naked chart. It doesn't matter. A naked chart will do it. All right. We just have the added benefit of seeing the, uh, of seeing the momentum come back in the market. You know, that's, that's a, an edge that we have. Right? A desert is anything between the two moving averages. Right? That's the desert. Right? There's a there's a big moving average, there's a little moving average right there. This one comes from the 60 minute world, so it's faster. This is slower. Inside the desert, we do not know what we have. Do we have buyers or sellers? We don't know. When we're below both moving averages, we have more sellers than buyers. Right? See? Let me pop it up there. Right? You have more sellers and buyers when you're below the both moving averages, all right? Notice the up moves. Why do they keep going up? Because they, they ran out of sellers. So they go up and find sellers, and when they find them, they down they go. Ran out of sellers, up, find them, down they go. Ran out of sellers, up, find them, down they go. Ran out of sellers all the way to the desert, and boom, down they go, all right? Continued on down, ran out of, out of sellers, up to the desert, find sellers, all right? Once we go into this room here, there's, there's a 240 chart here and a 60. We have more sellers and buyers. The buyers can't overwhelm that many sellers. It's just that simple. But once they do, then, then you now have more buyers than sellers on a 60, but you have, still have more sellers and buyers on a, on a 240. Therefore, it usually goes like this in the desert, right? Because there's a battle going on, right? So that's it. Stands for a world flush, right? Our history was that when we first started our trading room in 2003, 
we uh, rented a building on the Chisholm Trail. We used to drive, the cowboys used to stop and play poker on the way to drive the cattle to Kansas City. So we developed our trades and our software there. And we, uh, and we named them at the time after poker hands. Wild cards, five, six aces, uh, royal flush, all that kind of stuff. Right? That's what we did. So then we became a club. And the next thing you knew, we had 120 traders online with us. And we had to get servers and tech support and all that. So what did we end up doing? We ended up getting dragging, kicking, screaming into the business of being chart people and education people. That wasn't our plan. We were just traders. That's what we were, traders. Right? Developed their own software for us. But now it's out. So, yeah, we don't use we don't use 50 SMAs and EMAs or 200 SMAs. We don't use that. It doesn't help us. We, we don't have anything against that. One of my best friends, Greg Michalowski, he trades with nothing but that. Right? And uh, but. Yeah, it was Poker Alley. Exactly right, James. Right. So, no, it's just later that day. Might be an hour later. Right. Pound dollar. Yeah, I don't know how many times we've gone through the pound dollar. We've gone pound dollar forty times, maybe more. So everybody, pay attention. All right. We have a breakout. We're going to go to the downside. We've already taken our target out. This was the target that everybody took. Our traders averaged 70 pips. That was the average tra uh, trade for our traders on this trade from yesterday. We identified that trade yesterday. Everybody see we're looking for this opportunity right here. All right? So what are we looking for? That to happen. All right? So let's go down here to the 60-minute chart. What are they doing? All right, they have a candle that has not been squared up. They were con doing consolidation in here. They need to square up the candle. So they're coming up to square up the candle so they can square it up and go to the downside. All right. All right. In order to do go down, they got to go up. All right. Just remember that. All right. That's all you got to remember. All right. So let's take this down to 10 and let's look at it. Now we can see when they square this up, which they've just done right there. They finally got the square up done. And what do we got? A set of twins right there, tweezers. Set of twins instantaneously because they've accomplished what they wanted to do. All right, we're now in a bear flag. All right, we have a bear flag to the upside, right there, and we're looking for a bear flag as a sell sign. After the square up, we're in good position now to go to the downside. We will have to be out of the bear flag. We will have to be below the support in order to get this trade. So it's only going to happen below 51.26. That's where it's going to happen. All right. No, squaring up is not. Squaring up is squaring up. All right. There's lots to learn. Uh, squaring up is squaring up. All right. It retraces that candle because they were consolidating. They own a lot of buys in here that they got to get rid of. So they got to sell them to the dumb money. They just sold them to the dumb money, and then they instantaneously put a set of twins in to go to the downside. All right. All right. How do you recognize bear flags? They are measured moves. They are they are going up, but they're measured moves. And they could, they could continue doing this until FOMC. They could do that. But it's still a sell sign, not a buy sign. All right? We will not be a buyer until we break out of this moving average up here, this red one. So forget being a buyer until you get above that moving average. All right? uh, now nothing happened, Ian. It's FOMC day. There's not going to be anything probably happen. Twins are two candles that are one is going up, and then they close in reverse and starts to move down. All right? So there we go. I don't know. All right. All right. We're at the 1030 bump. All right. Now they can move it. All the option contracts have expired. That we're going to expire at 1030. All right. So Euro is a mess, Esteban. It's a mess. As it usually is. All right. All right. So we tried to break the downside. We got, a, we got a test of it, but we never got anywhere back inside the uptrend. We could go right this way. With FOMC today, we could easily go up. All right. I don't know, Pip. Euro pound, we're at the top. There's nothing to do with the euro pound. All of us are in this. All right. And we are anticipating taking out the 8764. 
All right, those of you who took the, uh, have taken the Euro Pound this week, which we, uh, which we identified on Monday, would you post your pips so far on Euro Pound? All of you who have made money on the Euro Pound this week. Got stopped for 100 pips, okay, John? Remember, it pays 50% more. 57 for Mike, Corey 30, Phil 103, all right, nice job. 95 Joe, 43 Dennis, all right? 75 for Ron, all right? 48 Adriano, all right? All right? So, times five, oh wow, 100 times five, five lots for 100 pips. Nice job, John Robert, all right? Yeah, 100, lot, 100 lots with 100, 100 pips with five lots. 105 for Birdie. All right, see, all right, 203 with four positions for Lee. All right, so this is why we're to Helen. Nice job, Helen. 50 pips. All right, this is why we're target traders because we identify these areas right here. Don't forget tomorrow I'm going to do a webinar on this, so you'll be able to do a webinar. We're not going to be trying to trade. We'll just be doing a webinar. On it. So you all want to sign up for that. Even if you can't be here, you will get the recording if you sign up for it. All right. So these are all the areas that we traded, all right? So that's it. So there we go. There you go, Joe. Thank you. That's good news. All right. And uh, we trade the EG because once it starts to trend, it trends very nicely, but it pays 50% more than the euro. So everybody's interested in 50% more money, all right? So... Uh, we don't tell you those, William. I've answered that. We'll never tell you what they are. Never. All right. All right. So here we go. Looking for the. We're gonna we're gonna close her down here because of FOMC. So I'm gonna close this recording off. It went two hours. Okay. And give me a second. I'm gonna redo. Open it back up with another recording so we do the session recap. Now, you want to pay attention to the session recap. It will be posted later for you on a page. You will get the link. All right. So, this is session recap for 7.31-2013. All right. All right. So, make a note of the notes there. All right, we're going to start over here in the Euro. We're going to go. Now, keep your questions. I'm not going to answer any questions because we need to keep this at 10 minutes. I'm not answering any questions. All right. We don't want a 25, 30 minute session recap. We want 10 minutes so it's easy to go see and then get caught up and ready to go for the next markets. All right. On the Euro, as you can see, let me take you to a day chart here. You'll see we are at a potential top. And there is a day chart top coming from way back over here, right here. So a break up to the upside only has a move to the day chart top. This is why they're trying to break it to the downside. We are prepared for the downside, as you can see. We already have the targets. Our first trade would be here. All right. So we have to take the uptrend out. We've got to take the support out at 32.30. So below 32.30, we're looking for the first target, which is 31.84. All right. There's a mess in here, so just move your stop. And then this is the next trade after that down to 3106. So there's two part trades, but they're separated because we have this big support area right in here. All right. All right. So that's the euro. British pound. British pound, we're in a bear flag. We've just squared up. All right. So we're in position now. And this was a trade from yesterday. Our traders made 70 pips last night on this trade. So how do they do it? From this session recap. This is what we're looking for right here. Remember. FOMC is today. What does that mean? That means that every single thing could trade, change. All right. Hi, Clarence. Good to see you back, buddy. Nice to have you back. All right. All right. So that's the opportunity. If we can break below 51.30 here, we're looking for a target of 50.25. We could get down as low as 50.06 or 50 and maybe even a 46.80. That's the opportunity. Again, FOMC is today, and this could just as easily turn direction and go headed that way. So be aware of that. All right, but be ready for that trade because there's 180 pips down there, folks. All right, dollar CAD. We anticipated this breakout yesterday. Some of our traders got, uh, you know, uh, 30, 40 pips on the dollar CAD on that trade. It has since come down, and um, you know, nothing, nothing to do at this point. We're waiting for the trade to to bounce, and we're looking to go up to first target is here at 103.44.
Second target is 103.71. That will exceed its ATR, so that's all it will do today. Right there. All right. All right, so Swissy, Swissy, we, we attempted to break out this morning. We're not successful. We've come back into the downtrend, okay? We're waiting to see if we get an uptrend. We're prepared for that, okay? We, this is probably going to end up being a head and shoulders down here. As you can see, there's a head and a shoulder right there. Head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulders for the bounce, okay? What will it do? The dollar Swissy follows the dollar index. So at FOMC today, if they buy dollars, we're going up. If at FOMC they sell dollars, we're going down to the day chart bottom here. All right? That's why everything is on hold for now. All right? Because nobody knows what it's going to do. All right? FOMC is a big, 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 big announcement. All right? Dollar yen. Dollar yen, uh, where we had a bear flag, which we did break, and there was a little bit of money there. We're now back up. Why did it go back up? Because the dollar was bought today. What's the base currency of the dollar yen? Dollar. So it went up today, which makes total sense. But they did they are not necessarily going to the upside yet. All right? We have we now have just got back up inside this old bear flag. We could turn right here. They squared up this candle right there. And they've now squared it up. They're in position to go. We're actually looking for the sell to here. A break of 97.50. We're going to take it down to 97.03. That's the trade. Two trades. One and two. That's a snowman. I'll draw the snowman. So you you can see it. There's one, and there's two. All right, there's a snowman. That's how you, uh, we want snowman, because we can press our winners here. So that means trade one is here, trade two is here. How do we trade that? One-third of our lots here, two-thirds of our lots here. That way, if we get it wrong, we're wrong on only one-third of our lots. But if we're right, we get all of them on. All right? Very simple. Nothing hard here. It's trade only in those wide open spaces, folks. <laughs> All right, Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar, we're waiting for the breakdown here. All right. Again, everything could change at FMMC. We will not be interested in this currency until we take the 89.50 out and the 89.44. So it's 89.40 down to this target right here, which is the 12705 and the 618. All right. Now, that's trade one right there. There's a lower trade if it gets really going. That will that'll be its ATR, but we can see the day chart bottom is here. So what we actually have is a two-part trade again. One here, one here. Trade one, trade two. All right. Move your stop at the 8800. Move your stop at 8857. Double your position below 8850. All right. Very simple. Very easy to see. That's a wide open space. Don't miss the wide open space. What do traders do? They try to trade in this crap right here, and they wonder why they get burned. Oh, man, the broker took my stop again. No, you traded the worst spot. Well, they try to trade here. Oh, yeah, there it is. I'm in. Oh, and then they miss this one. All right, see? That's what ends up happening. All right, so don't do it. Just don't do it. Zero pound. All right, we're waiting to see if we get this breakout here. Now, remember, this is a bear flag at this point. All right, it is a bear flag. Very methodical move to the upside, an ABC retracement. All right, you can see that. A bear flag. So this is still a potential sell. If they come down to the break, uh, to the bear flag, to the downside, now we'll take it up to a 240 chart. We can see that we have the day chart bottom down here. All right? We don't want to make that trade. We want to wait for the bounce. All right? Don't trade the euro yen to the downside. There's not enough pips in here. And, we, and when they're going to the downside, they're looking for sellers. All right? You can see we've had an A, B, and a C has not finished off down here. All right? This is the area we want after they get this all done. They're not here yet, so let's walk away from it. All right? But uh, euro pound, I mean pound yen. Pound yen is absolutely in a bear flag, as you can see. They have squared up the candle. We're in position to go down. Where are we going? All the way to 148, 90, uh, 147.95. Right. So let's take this up to 240, so we can see that on the big picture, and we can see that here. And there's the target right there. We look over here, and we see what consolidation right there. All right. So we'll look for that target right there. If you want to know what's going to do in the future? Go in the past and see what they did before. All right, there it is. So if we get the breakdown here, all right, we're going to be very, very interested in the sell on this um, pound yen. All right, so what do we got to do? We got to be below 14900, below 14900, all right, below there, and we will trade it down to 148 roughly. All right, pretty easy to see that one. That's one big trade. All right, all right New Zealand yen, 
I mean, New Zealand dollar, all right, we've been waiting for this sell-off, and we didn't get it today. I mean, they, they got in position, but they never went. Can we see we're in a wide open space, but nobody's going? Why aren't they going? FOMC, all right? So if we get a hook back up in here and get a turn after FOMC, there's trade one, and there's trade two down to this line right here. So trade one, trade two. Again, a snowman here, all right? We don't have a trend on this yet because we've just barely broken out, all right? In order to put a trend on here, we're going to need three, uh, three tops, all right? We've got one, we've got two. We're going to need a top up here to get a trend on, three. They haven't done that. So what could happen? FOMC could drive it up to here and turn it here to get the trend to the downside. So be aware, always look for market structure. Do not look for market um, uh, for a trade. All retail traders go in the market looking for a trade, and that's why they get whacked. Go in the market looking for the structure of the market, and you will see where the trade will exist. So we're going to have two. If they pull it up here and turn it to the downside, and we'll put a line on here to kind of, it's just, it's not a real line. It's just a working line for now, nothing else. All right, so we could get a move up to here at FOMC, turn it on a dime, and now we got this big opportunity. All right, so our trade uh, opportunity is if they go to the top up here about 81, 80, 13, right up in here, we'll look for the sell off down here. All right, if we just get a pull back up to here, we're going to look for the sell off down here. If we get it up here, we'll double our position below 79.50. All right, let's get down below 79.50. Target one is right here. All right, and I would not trade two. I just hang on to this because the longer this takes, the slighter it goes. As you can see, we're in a potential wedge here, and that's not a good thing. All right. So the wedge has not been built yet. I just put that on. So this really doesn't exist. It's just here to give me a line to look shoot for in case it goes to the upside. All right. Aussie yen. Aussie yen has a little trade here left. All right, a little bitty move here of about 60 pips down here. Let's take it down to a 60 so we can see it. All right, so you can see it's down to the bottom of the trend line. There's a PSR here. All right, so this is the opportunity right here. So if it turns to the downside and you take the 88 out, you're going to 80, 8757. All right, that's only 23 pips, folks. I would walk away from it. Forget it. It's not worth risking money for 23 pips. All right, euro pound. We're looking to take out the date chart top. We do have a target up here at R4. We could continue it up through here. All right? So uh, we're right now on the 240, it's up here, uh, you can see we've already taken out the day chart trend. All right? And you can see what did they do when they did that? They immediately retraced, immediately come down. All right? We need a retracement on this. All right? We could get a very deep retracement on this thing because we need to square up this candle down here. They could square this up all the way down to here before they go. If they do that, we're going to take the same trade we got yesterday. We're going to take the same trade again up to the top. So be aware of that. And if we break, hook, and go above the 87.64, we're looking for 89.14 as the target. Uh, oh, excuse me, 88.14. Right. So we got to get a retracement before we can before we can trade the euro pound again. Your right. your Aussie, all right. Euro Aussie has continued up the hill, and to go back to Prentice, I'm trying to help Prentice here. Prentice asked the question, do we limit out? We don't limit out, and this is exactly why you don't limit out. All right? You're seeing the reason. You move your stop. You move your stop. You move your stop. You move your stop. And you may go all the way up to here, and if you moved your stop instead of limited out, you pulled another 60 to 90 pips out of this trade right here. The traders who traded it last night on the Euro Aussie made an average of 75 pips on the trade uh, yesterday. The day before, they made an average of 200 pips, folks. So uh, lots of trades, lots of money being made here. All right, uh, all right Euro pound one more time. All right, we could retrace. We got to square up this candle down here. So we could go back down 88, 86.80 area for the for the for there. Might not get that low. Let's pop a set of fibs on it and see what it looks like. All right. yeah, it looks like 86.75 is a good place. Okay, so you know it could, it needs to square this candle up. All right, so if they came all the way down to here and bounced at 86.75, we've got a 6.18 fib on a PSR. That's a good bounce point for that exact same trade right there. All right, all right. So there we go. All right. Uh, Next one, EuroCAD. Uh, EuroCAD, we're waiting for a bounce. The EuroCAD is just not moving, folks. As you can see, I'd stay out of the EuroCAD, even though we know where the targets are up here. Uh, stay out of it because you see it's whipsawing. All right? Just pass on this. It's whipsawing. Whipsawing like crazy. 
So be aware of that. Uh, just stay away from the that euro cap. CAD yen, it has got a very strong movement to the upside, as you can see, very strong. We're looking for it to come back down, maybe, or maybe break up. If it breaks up, I don't have the targets on for here. I have to take the chart slowly and take them off. But a sell I'm ready for. If it takes a sell, comes back down, they turn on this channel. They're running a channel to the downside. We're looking to come all the way down here to 83.88 if they make the sell. Now, be aware. All right, that if they sell it, they may only come down here and bounce it, and then we would have an inverse head and shoulders. All right, so the only way to trade it is to invalidate the right shoulder of the head, inverse head and shoulders. So you're going to have to be below 95 to even trade this, and then you've got that opportunity. All right, uh, so uh, there we go. All right, New Zealand yen, New Zealand yen, pop it up to a big target, all right, big chart, I should say. Big, uh, we broke to the downside on the wedge, big wedge here. We finally broke to the downside. We're looking for this target down here. Today, right now, this is a PSR. All right? That's a previous resistance, which is now a support. All right? If we break that, we're going to the HSI target of S5. All right? So it's a two-part trade again, another snowman. and We love snowman. All right? So two-part trade, one is here, two is here. How do we trade that? One-third of our lots here. Two thirds of our lots here. All right. When you when you take this target out, you don't you don't limit out. You leave number one on. It's only one third of your lots. All right. And when one third of your lots is on and they break hook and go in this area, you double your position down to here. Okay. If you make that trade and you and if it happens, you'll hear lots of traders tomorrow telling you they made 180 pips on that trade from this session recap right here. So be aware of that. All right. Pound New Zealand, all right, we're stuck inside a wedge, all right, Pound New Zealand, we don't know if we're going up or down, so until we get that direction, we don't know what we're doing yet, all right. A breakout up gives us a big area right in here, should it do that. A breakdown, and we got a big target way down here, so again, a two-part trade here. You can see trade one is right here, and trade two is right here, all right. So which one is it going to do? I don't know, so i got to wait till it happens, all right. Silver, for those of you who can, we're waiting to see if we get, we may get a break of the bear flag to the downside. If we get a break to the bear flag to the downside, I'm not, I'm just not interested in this one at all. Uh, as you can see, we've had it one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and ABC. What it, yeah, we could, we could definitely keep coming down to R2. Right? So if we break 1950, you're looking to come down to R, R2. What we really hope is they bounce here, bounce, break it, hook, and go up to 20. 2050 right up in this area right here. Right. Now they're not swing traders. There's a target trades to the target. Right. They may end up being a swing trade, but they are not a swing trade. Right. Well, XAG, yeah, XAG is a swing trade. I'm sorry, that's the only one we do do that. Right. I thought you were talking about normally. All right, let's go look at what they were doing with the dollars right now. They were trying to buy them this morning. They were not successful, and they're back inside the downtrend. At FOMC today, you can now see that there's a very real possibility that we're unsuccessful in breaking that out. All right, so what is it now? It's a bear flag. So it's a bear flag which tells us that the dollar may go to the downside. We'll wait for FOMC and maybe that will happen. If the dollar breaks to the downside, Swiss is going down, CAD's going down, pound euros, New Zealand and Aussie are going up. All right. Pound chief. This was a good trade for our traders this morning. Pound chief, most of our, our average trade on the pound chief from last night, yesterday was 110 pips for traders. We're now breaking through the 1270, pretty convincingly, by the way. So our next target is this 39.27. How are we going to trade that? We go down to the 60-minute chart. We find a swing low, swing high down here. We've got a swing low and a swing high. We pop the fibs on it, and that gives us the place to move our stops. All right. So we're going to, if we, if we get a break, hook and go to the 618, we'll take the trade there. We'll move our stop at the 1400. We'll move our stop again at the 1270, and we'll hang on for that target right there. All right? There is a possibility you could you could trade. Yeah, I would just take that as one trade. All right, just take it as one whole trade. That's it. A little danger. Pound Aussie. All right, Pound Aussie continue its move to the upside, but we are at the tops. Pretty easy to see that. All right, so what do we got to do here? Nothing. We're at the top. All right, the Pound Aussie does have a target here, however. So they've got to prove that they're going to do that. All right, no, we won't be. We don't trade FOMC. You might want to trade it after, after, you go in after it. 30 minutes after FOMC is the time to trade it. Don't go in before, you'll get sucked in. All right, if we do get a break, hook, and go here, 
then we will be looking for this target up here at 71.79, uh, 71.70, right? Moving up stop here, 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 and here, right? That's where you're trading, right? All right, uh, just closed out 200. Nice job, uh, Michael Anthony. Way to work, all right? So good work. Finally, you're in New Zealand. All right, you're in New Zealand. Finally broke the wedge to the upside. Everybody should be able to see this opportunity here. Two-part opportunity again, right here. Snowman one more time. One, two. All right. One third of your lots here. Two thirds of your lots here. First target is uh, 6769. Second target is 69, 6841. All right. What are we going to have to have? A break, hook, and go after FOMC. All right. You can see they're pushing it right now, but we're not going to trade it before FOMC. All they're trying to do is get into the wide open space so everybody knows that. All right. All right. So, uh, there we go. So we're looking for, uh, they've, they've now proved, they're saying, we're, we're trying to make this move, boys. We're trying to make this move. You can see that's what they're trying to do. So they're telegraphing that to the world. If FOMC comes out right, this is what they're going to do. So we don't want to miss that trade right there. All right. All right. So there you go. All right, folks, that's what I see. Uh, don't forget to check those, uh, the notes up there. Also, make sure. All right. A moderator question from FX, okay? Uh, uh, what's the, what is it? All right, yeah. Thank you, Pepper. Um, one of the moderators is going to come in here and talk and put something up here, so hold, hang on a minute. That's correct, Jerry. Okay, he's typing, so everybody be aware. Hold on, you got a message coming. Don't forget, you need to, uh, if you want to be in the free webinar tomorrow, you got to register. PSR is Previous Support or Resistance, y'all. Previous Support or Resistance is just an acronym to, so we don't have to say Previous Support or Resistance every time we say PSR. All right, the recording will come out for you, all right? And uh, you'll get uh, all of you will get an email for the session recap, so you're ready to go. Beware FOMC today. Don't trade before FOMC. Wait for it to come out. Wait a half an hour at least, and then maybe you'll be able to do that. Check the notes page up there. All right. So that's very important to check the notes. All right. So. All right. Let me pop the notes up. I'm gonna. Scroll it over to this screen right there. There are the notes. All right. So uh, I'm going to let you read them. I'm going to leave this on for a few minutes. All right. And uh, I'm going to bug out of here. All right. So uh, it's at 107 tomorrow uh, Eastern time. 107 tomorrow. All right. Additionally, right here. Okay. Let me kind of highlight something. This is where you sign up. All right to register for tomorrow's free webinar. It'll be right after we close this room, about a half an hour afterwards, we're going to set it up. All right. All right. So uh, there you go. Um, and uh, support questions. If you have support questions, there's the support for targettrading.com. Uh, you can read about our traders records. All this was here. And people get typing in. What is this? What is this? What is this? It's all sitting here. Make sure you check the notes. It's right up there on your screen. You just pick it, and all that will be here. If there are new notes tomorrow, you need to check this. Okay? There you go. Uh, yeah, Jay. And that's why we wanted you to soak in, right, Jay? Instead of going and trying to learn software, soak. Understand it. It'll start going, wow, this is making a lot of sense. This is making sense. Of course, no wonder I wasn't winning before. I was trading at all the wrong places. I was looking for pips in all the wrong places. You know, old country song. Uh, all right, folks. I will talk with all of you tomorrow. Have a great day. Be careful.